thought fire that episode though. I, I thought about it. it's funny though you said it because I was I, I was gonna go back and clip from that episode because that shit was wild. Yeah, you can clip that. Just beep it out. That shit was it's wild. A hilarious clip. But I feel like it, I, I don't know, bro. I, I think sometimes they like. I do believe in whatever energy you give off does come back to you. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah, yeah. But like, I gotta start controlling my energy because I get myself in situations that like I have really good intentions, but it just come out to be some funny, mm-hmm. random stuff, right? I'm at the gym, like I'm I'm kind of minding my own business. I just got I, I don't work out with headphones, mm-hmm. like, and that's unusual for most people. But mm-hmm. that's because I got tired. If I left my headphones. My whole workout was messed up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I just trained myself to not even need them, right? That's a weird shit, bro. You're a bizarre <laughs> nigga. But I just, you know how, like, when you get comfortable doing something, like, if I leave my wrist straps, work out dead for some mm-hmm. reason. It's yeah. just, it's my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. So I trained myself to not do it. Then I decided, okay, I'm going to start back using headphones, right? But I don't have no playlist. I don't know what to listen to when I'm working out because mm-hmm. it's just something I started back doing. So I'm sitting here on this machine, and, like, you know how they have rolls in the gym? So if you're on a machine, there's a machine facing you as well, right? So I'm on this machine, and uh, I'm doing my little crunches. It's a girl in front of me doing rolls, but she jamming. And I'm generally trying to figure out, like, what she's listening to, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, damn, dog, she jamming. She got her hair down, you know, whatever. Every time she finishes her set, like, she bopping to the next weight, to throw the next weight on. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, I want to really know what she listening to, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to find a perfect time. I don't want to interrupt her workout. Like, these are all genuine. This is my thought process. Yeah. So I finally called her when she got off. We kind of made eye contact. I'm like, excuse me. Like, hey, listen, but you jamming over there. Like, I really want to know, like, what you listening to so I can listen. Mm-hmm. She, I don't, I'm not listening to nothing. I'm like, man, you, you bopping way too hard. She said, mm-hmm. I just learned how to walk again, you asshole. Oh, my God. Like, oh, oh yeah. shit. Well, okay. <laughs> but she to me, yeah. Like she was like, you know what I mean. When she yeah. got up, she was, but she was in a car accident. Uh-huh. But like that's the energy. How did that look like dancing to you, though, brother? You she was, boy. she was getting it to every much, like, bro, every hobbling, step she took, bro. huh? Hobbling. Yeah, now, <laughs> yeah, obviously, <laughs> but in the in the moment, you tell hobbling and dancing, bro. Brother, it like she was hitting them folks. I it was like this. <laughs> she was hitting them folks. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'd, oh my goodness. I'd be having genuine intentions and shit yeah, like that. Though. Yeah, it yeah. really looked like fuck was <laughs> right here in the car. Uh-huh. And I was just like, for only me, bro. Like, I, mm-hmm. I didn't know this lady was in no accident. <laughs> I thought she was. But every set, I'm like, brother, she is dancing. Mm-hmm. Every set, bro, I got to know what album that well, is. The hell was down uh-huh. so you can see if she had headphones. Exactly, out. right. And man, oh my god, yeah, they had them AirPods now, so you can't really tell. So. My, my bad, bro. Oh, just, man, that's just the life I live. Baby. Hitting them folks. Is that even hitting them folks? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I have no what idea. What is that? What is that dance that, 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 that you just did? Oh, yeah, that's, that's the um, that's, that's the heat, ain't it? That's no, ain't the heat. No, that. That hitting the folks? I don't dance. Yeah, folks like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> it was a white girl hey, or a black black girl? It was a black girl. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I, I so I just... Girl. My bad, though. All right. How did you, how did, hold on. Huh? One more before you yeah. move on from this. <laughs> how did you recover from this? I didn't. You okay. don't recover. Okay. That's yeah, crash and burn. Off. You had to go that, No it pun off. intended. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but... It just it, it is what it is. My bad, baby. I won't speak to you again. It is what it is. But I had genuine intentions, but I just want to know what she was listening to. Folks. I ain't listening though. <laughs> if technically she did hit them folks. She did, or, or, or them folks hit her. <laughs> but what <laughs> Yeah. But somebody hit somebody. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, I am. <laughs> hey, you be making stuff work, though. Uh, man, I think I live to, like, egg you on, man, bro. Bro. It, but I said only I me, though. The lab, my bro. energy. Like, I feel like I just give off that retarded-ass energy. <laughs> like, bro, like. That's retarded energy for sure. And I had all the gen- most genuine intentions in my heart. I just, uh-huh. all I want to know is what. But that's why you need me to. with you, bro, to stop you from asking shit like that. Like, bro, don't ask that lady if she. Bro, you might have thought she was dancing, too, though. I wouldn't have asked, though. Yeah, I maybe. wouldn't ask. <laughs> maybe not. I wouldn't ask. All right, all right, here's another question then. If uh if do we all agree that if a straight man, well, if a man likes a transsexual, that he's not straight. Correct. Right. A general panel. He's not straight. Okay, cool. Yeah. If you 
go up if you go up to a girl in the club, mm-hmm. you find her attractive, and you buy mm-hmm. her a drink, and you have a conversation, right? Because you find she's attractive, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then she tells you that she's trans. Mm-hmm. Do you not like trans? No, you yeah. just don't yeah. know. Yeah, I think I she think was attractive. That's fine because because mm-hmm. there's a such thing. Like my thing is like for men, attractiveness is like a look. Like anybody can mm-hmm. build a look. Like. Mm-hmm. A, mo- a man can go get surgery and all the shit you like. You feel what I'm saying? And you see that because it's what you're attracted to. But when I find out it's a dick under there, you feel me? Right. It, it mutes automatically because you can't tell me. But that it don't necessarily mute. Not it, just, do, it does mute. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you why. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna put you in a scenario. You in the okay. same scenario. You walked yeah. up. You thought they was fine as hell. Yeah. You feel me? And they turn around. and They like, oh no, I'm a boy. Mm-hmm. You turned off. That's sure. It. 100%. Yeah. You still didn't yeah. find that nigga, though. No. Nah, 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 go out the window. He was fine before I knew you was I'm, cute. I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Because it's, it's the same it's thing. well put together, I'm going to give you an example of why. Because with women all the time, a woman will have a conversation with you thinking that you're a handsome nigga. Right. But some of the shit that come out your mouth can make you unattractive automatically. Sure. Because the thing about it is, attractiveness is not just looking at you, too. It's the energy and aura that we carry. Fact. Yeah. But once I understand that yeah. that energy and aura is false, no, no, no. then I'm, attractive. Then I'm not saying that. The dick don't make them unattractive. No. I get that whole theory. <laughs> but mine is the dick. You thought she was fine. Absolutely. That, you, so he a fine ass dude. <laughs> that don't make you gay, though. I, that's what I'm asking. Oh, yeah. No, that don't make you gay. <laughs> nah, it's like my, right. like my thing is like, if you had if you if, if you had a pussy that was for real, we going through. Right. You feel me? So it's just like, that's why I say like, just to, to see some shit and, and think it's attractive. It's one thing, but then when you actually find out, like, bro, like that, this a nigga, that shit go out the window. Yeah. Yeah, I ain't even, bro, you know, go and get your hips out of here, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. I, just, <laughs> I just wanted to see if it temporarily made you gay. Like, you, nah, you nah. thought this dude was fine. Nah, what nah. makes 30 you, seconds nah. ago. What makes you gay, bro? I, now, people like me trying to, like, mm-hmm. fucking, like, create, like, like, bro, what makes you gay is if you fucking have sex with a man or you fucking... Or attractive, you Attract- yeah, 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 even yeah. if it's a man that's dressed as a woman or a man that looks like a woman, bro. If you know it, that makes you gay, yeah. You feel me? There's like we got so many gray areas, bro. You fuck a boy, you gay, simple as that. Anything outside of so that, so what about for the people who went all the way? Like, let's say they went to another country and they bought a escort or something mm-hmm. like that, right? Mm-hmm. So they got aura from an escort, mm-hmm. come to find out it was a mm-hmm. dude, right? Mm-hmm. If you didn't know, no, no. No, you got up for a dude. Knowingly <laughs> fucking, let me let me let me correct you. Knowingly fucking a dude makes you gay. Or knowingly receiving head, like if I know you a boy mm-hmm. and I act on that, then you gay. It's that simple. It's that simple. So it's just the knowing. It's the knowing that makes you gay. It's because because gay is a mentality. It's not a. It's a mentality that yeah. it provo- promotes an action. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying. So it's just like. Anybody can trick you, bro. Like, you can meet the most beautiful woman in sure. the world, bro, and find out that, like, hey, I was born a man. Sure. You feel me? Like, right. I'm not going through with this. But that just mean I there's a transsexual out there that I found attractive. I just found her attractive. But, bro, like... I didn't go through with it because I'm not gay. Absolutely. But 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 in, in, in reality, bro, it's almost like, as a man, bro, and I, I this is what I hate about men. Men try to act like they don't know what attractiveness is, even with other men. Just like if you, if I got a, if I got a girl, right, that got a friend, mm-hmm. right, I know which one of my homies to bring. You feel me? Like if I, she yeah, say, yeah, bring, yeah. bring one of your, your one of your cute friends and your handsome friend. Right. I know which one of my friends handsome. Yeah. I know which one of my friends attractive. Mm-hmm. I don't want to fuck them though. But yeah, we know sure, what attractiveness sure, is. Sure, sure, so my sure, thing is, I can I can tell what's attractive in a man and a woman. Sure. So if you are a man that's dressed as a woman, you feel what I'm saying? You still can be attractive as far as you feel yes. the way you put together. But, but bitch, I don't want you. Thirty seconds ago, you just wanted to fuck this dude, lady. Yeah, you but just didn't know. You didn't know, right? The reason why I asked yeah. this whole question is because uh-huh. you know, as as I found out, I did some research. Well, I didn't do no research. I was watching something and it researched for me, right? Mm-hmm. And I found out because people like to say that this is a new age thing, this trans and this. Well, man, mm-hmm. it's been going on for ages, bro. Oh, like yeah. when I tell you, yeah. I'm talking in the time, yeah, like historical yeah. castle yeah. ages, right? Like, you know what I mean? Game like, of Thrones time. Yeah. yeah, like right. yeah. so. I'm like, okay, cool. So, like, I hear what people are saying and, and stuff like that. And I know we, as, as long as we live, like the technology changes right mm-hmm. so now they coming up with things as time goes along you not gonna be able to tell and another 30 years mm-hmm. like look at where trans has come from today right to where it might have been 40 years ago right, right yeah. so you give it another 30 with surgery and technology bro you might not really be able to tell but that's why they're trying to so now what does that do for your sexuality you might really be in front of somebody that has no resemblance mm-hmm. of being born a boy except for 
right. the knowledge to know I was born a boy. Right, right. So right. now what does that do for you? Right. Not, not you specifically, but right. just mm -hmm. men who are attracted to that. Like, bro, this does not look like a dude. But that's why they're trying to erase those lines. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Because they understand where it's going. And it's it's, it's going to be a thing to where, bro, it's going to come a time to where you're going to be wild as fuck for just being by like his women. Like, yeah. you just want some pussy. It's just, like, weird. <laughs> Niggas like, damn, bro, you don't... You don't, you don't, you don't do the trans thing? It's like being in a drug, a yeah. coke party, and you don't do coke. Everybody like, damn, bro, you don't want to bump? Right. Yeah. You like, nah, bro, I don't do this shit. You wild. Right. This is a coke party. Right. You feel me? <laughs> like, you wild for not taking yeah. this. So it's the same. It's, the world is going to be the same way, bro. It's mm -hmm. just like everything is influenced by the numbers and what major, majority rules. Mm -hmm. So when the majority starts saying, just like there was a time in America to where it was cool to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um homophobic. Mm -hmm. It was it was cool to be homophobic. Yeah, it, was, it was a thing. It was yeah. in commercials, it was in ads Media and everything. Yeah. But majority changed that majority rules and now it's not okay to be homophobic. It's the same thing with racism. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, you racism was an open thing. They hung people in public. But it became a thing at some point that was majority rule and said this shit is not okay. So now you got to be closet racist. Right. You got to be closet closet gay. You got to be in the closet with everything now because it's not accepted by the masses. But when the masses, there have there there have always been about the same amount of gay people. But the the, the yeah, people sure, that sure. are coming out and, and it, are comfortable more. with it now is mm -hmm. different now because the masses say it's okay now. Agreed. And it's not okay to bash you or shame you on that. Yeah. So a lot of people that's why they say coming out the closet. Mm -hmm. then that's it. Is what? That, oh, that's that's a blank. No, nah, that's just okay. a block. But the reason why I ask is because I, I ask the question straight, narrow, straightforward. Mm -hmm. I feel like most straight dudes have a straight line. It's either A or B, and that's it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But then I just start thinking, like, as things go along, as things change, mm -hmm. like, is it possible that there is a gray area? No, there's still, there's still not going to be a gray area. I don't think it will. As, I, everything's got better. Bro, we can look at a phone and see a person now, bro, mm -hmm. from back when you used to have to dial that thing on the mm -hmm. wall and yeah, spin it. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. what? Surgeries, bro, 30, 40 years from now, bro, that dude is gonna be a replica of and, a and that's, woman. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. Let's say for instance, we can let's say for instance we can take yo yo, let's say we can take everything about you and put it in an artificial woman. Mm -hmm. And then you walk up on a man and you be like, I was a dude before I got in this body. Mm -hmm. And he like, all right, let's do it. He gay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm you feel me? So it's just like my thing is like no no matter how far technology goes, for right. me, there still mm -hmm. is no gray area. I think the I think what, right, so what I, creates the gray area is not knowing. Yeah. So what mm -hmm. if what if what if a hypothetical world, right? Uh -huh. What if the trans have created a perfect woman? Like now they can go get this surgery, mm -hmm. but they make them exactly a woman, right? Mm -hmm. But they act better than women. You you want to switch sides? Nope. <laughs> nope. So they they look exactly, smell like, <laughs> look like, I'll touch like. I'll take the headache. <laughs> everything. I'll take the headache all day. But I understand like a dude. I'll take the headache. <laughs> I'll take the headache. It's just bro. the knowing that throw you off? I'll take the headache. I'll get me a, I'll just get mm -hmm. me a tomboy ass girl and, yeah. and roll with that. <laughs> <laughs> they understand enough. Give me a headache. Then somebody gonna pull that birth certificate out the draw one day. I'm, be hot. <laughs> I'm going off. Yeah. I just, but I just thought about that because seriously, mm -hmm. like, all jokes aside, they are getting better and they, and they will continue to get better. Absolutely. And, just, yeah. and for the yeah. people that try to say, like, I try to be open minded all the way around. I try mm -hmm. to think outside mm -hmm. of how I personally feel because mm -hmm. I don't run the world. I'm not in everybody's brain. My yeah. facts are not everyone's facts. And I hear men talk about their sexuality and how they don't feel gay. And I think it's black people, too, though. We are mm -hmm. too, I don't want to say structured with our sexuality. We, we just too too much pride is in right, a lot right, of stuff right. we do. I agree and I that. think even, the, even with women, there are things that we won't admit to that we like yeah, or things mm -hmm. that we won't try because we just so masculine. Right, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Right, yeah. So when I try to listen to those people and think that, well, maybe is there something to sexuality that is in the middle? I think, that don't mean it's in the middle for me, but just, you know what I mean? Just trying to understand. Yeah, it go to what you say all the time, mm -hmm. the overcorrection. Like, motherfucker, like, I think, like, when women say we want a man to be sensitive, mm -hmm. now a man is too sensitive. You feel me? It's like motherfuckers don't know how to, like, dabble in shit. You feel right. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I think with um, with techno as technology ages and grows, though, the mindset will change, too. There will be very few people that think the way I think. 20 years from now. Oh, yeah. You feel yeah. My yeah. thought process goes out the window just like yeah. the old values went out the window. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like as technology changes, like they're changing the way we look at shit at the same time too. Yeah. Yeah. Man, we don't even know that. You feel mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just all that yeah. shit going to change together. Gotcha, yeah, right. So it ain't gonna be a thing that was changing and we like, oh, this shit weird. Uh, just like music change. Like music is terrible to me right now. Very mm -hmm. terrible, bro. There has like there's literally had, wasn't the number one song. In the past, I think they said the past year, this year that was not like a, a, like a, a rap, a, a, a yeah, album rap, yeah. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. And um, yeah, music is terrible to me now. But it's just like people who are picking it up and starting it new, they're 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 mocking and mimicking what's 
terrible. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So because like, that's all they know. That's all they know. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's just like the the shit that we consider real music is aged out. So they hear that and it's annoying to them. They just like, bro, what the fuck is this? <laughs> because this ain't music to them. Right. Mm -hmm. You feel me? It's all it is is just the languages are changing, bro. You feel mm -hmm. me? So if everybody around you starts speaking Spanish. And you like, damn, bro, like, and you still speaking English, eventually you're going to be the dinosaur. Yeah. So shit just going to age out. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that's all that is. Yeah. But shit, we 16 minutes yeah. and bring us in, man. Hey, listen, uh, <laughs> I mean, if you haven't judged by the subject matter, you are watching Anxiety Issue. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Adam 12 Taylor here with my brother, Boneface of Boneface Inc., and you invited a special guest with us today, man. We, we got, got a very, issue. very special guest. We have my man, Elrico <clears throat> Turnstall, producer, director, of Sacred, the movie, mm -hmm. Pensacola, Florida, um, Scambia High School yeah. alumni. Oh, yeah. You feel me? I'm going to let you take it from here because I know you're good at this point. My dog, my dog, he's a wrestling fan, so I know. Right. He finished, I know he got it. So I'm coming out like Stone Cold. I'm going to hit glass break, man. <laughs> turn, turn, turn. Turn. Yourself, yeah. man. I don't need one short change. Man. Man. Go ahead. Um, I'm just... End of the day, man, I said, I brought you guys this um, podcast, man, and you guys are doing a phenomenal job. Uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. I can definitely see this on major major platforms man coming up you're gonna be able to help us keep going all right all right but i love the chemistry man even just sitting here for the past 16 minutes mm -hmm. listen to you guys banter back and forth man i mean like i said there's there's definitely a lot of chemistry between you two man i can't wait to see what comes of it in the future anything i can do to help i want to help sure. but um yeah as you said straight out of scambia high school the nerdy kid from scambia high mm -hmm. school um it's kind of like a little catchphrase i'll go by because at the end of the day i was always unpopular but i always knew what my mission was in life and um, I joined the Army at a young age, man, fresh out of high school and seen the world and then came back here. Uh, so it allowed my view and, and opinions of things to be just a little bit different than uh, the people who just kind of just stayed here. So that's why I kind of respect this man right here for, you know, you taking your adventure and kind of going off, man, and, you know, doing what you did, man, and coming back to the city. So um, I just look, man, to be a help to everybody, man. I'm glad to be here on on an amazing podcast with you guys. Shout for out, sure, man. for sure. And, and it, it, this this proves to a lot, a lot of y'all, when you look at who was cool in high school and who was the nerd, that shit <laughs> always flip later in life. That's right. So so if you're in school and you're thinking it's cool to be cool now, you feel me? Like the people oh, yeah. that are actually doing their work and got their head down, then the people going to be your boss one day. That's right. Please. Don't peek in high school. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't peek in high school. But, <laughs> yeah. but do you think that being unpopular is actually a benefit in the long run? Does it? Does it help you keep your head down and focused mm. more so than the pop? Like the, the popular kid is focused on all of the popularity and everything that comes with it. So it's more focused on the now. Mm -hmm. Is being the unpopular kid, did it give you a, a better grasp of looking at the future? Yeah, and that's a, that's a great question. Um, I look at it as being unpopular and kind of being below the radar mm -hmm. allowed me to see more. It allowed my vision to be more you know, wider, as they say, and you kind of see the whole room. Mm -hmm. When you're popular, you're so focused on everybody looking at you and their opinions of you that you kind of get blinded and you kind of base your whole life of, off of is this going to be popular or not. When you accept who you are and you're like, okay, hey, I know it's who I am. And if I got two friends that I'm going to grow up with and be friends the rest of my life, I'm happy with that. So for me, I think um, it's a benefit. It's a benefit, man. It allows you to see the world at a, at, from a better view. Yeah, and that's crazy, though, because it's funny you said that that's super powerful because mm -hmm. I was a nerd in high school. I mean, in school before I got to the middle school, and I think it created so much balance. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What grade you was a nerd? All the way up until seventh grade, bro. Oh. Dead ass. That man was not no nerd. Dead ass. <laughs> Listen, bro. I, 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 shit, I shit you not. I two things. It's two stories I hate. I hate uh, that I was a nerd store and that I had a job. I had, bro, never had a job. This man. Never, that, that Listen, bro. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you how I became a nerd, though. Uh -huh. Right. Um, I grew up in a house to where um my mom clubbed every night. My mom was on drugs. Mm. My dad wasn't there. Um, like, my mom has 10 kids. Um, first five kids don't even know who their fathers are. Oh, wow. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Never really seen them until they got older, and most of them had never seen them. Mm. Um, I'm number six. I'm the first one to really, like, know who my father was and have a connection. But in a long story short, my house was in shambles. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. There was rarely ever any food in the house. The lights weren't always on. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when I got to an age to where I could go to school, I went to a place for the first time people were nice to me. Right. You feel mm -hmm. me? And I had two square meals a day. I eat breakfast and lunch. Mm -hmm. And I was so afraid of losing that outlet because I've seen people from my neighborhood get right. kicked out of school. Mm -hmm. I was so afraid of losing the outlet that I went there and I was good. I paid attention. But I didn't make a B until I was in the seventh grade. You feel me? I mean, mm -hmm. you was a nerd because you made good grades. That's what makes you a nerd. That's not what makes and, you. But a nerd. but mind you, mind you, mind you, like mind you, I'm an outcast too though. So I'm I'm yeah I'm yeah. I'm hey. listen. 
I'm by myself all the time. You feel me? I had one or two friends mm-hmm. just like you, mm-hmm. and it's just like I, I think um, I had a good balance though because one, and I didn't really go outside much. I was a kid to where all the way up until I was probably in about the fifth or sixth grade, I couldn't go outside because I was the parent in my house. So mm-hmm. it's just like I'm getting my sisters and brothers ready for school. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I'm going to school. I'm coming home. I'm babysitting. I'm cooking. I'm mm-hmm. cleaning, bro. Like all of these characteristics and traits helped me when I got older. But sure. that shit wasn't fun when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. So I think round about you have the little coins, do the, the little what they call what they call <laughs> pogs. What, pogs. What, what, that's what it was called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you yeah, have yeah. pogs? No, bro. That's that's that's, that's, that's nerdy. <laughs> that's, that's that's not necessarily nerd. Bro. You had Pokemon cards. No, that's just that's different. That's different no. circles and cultures, bro. That's like nerdy. there was some cool niggas that had pogs. I ain't, I know none. <laughs> yeah, I know. I had them. pogs and I was cool. There you go. But I was I wasn't cool. <laughs> I had pogs when I was cool. When I got cool, I put them bitch under my corny, bed. Corny, yeah. being yeah. corny and being a nerd are two different things, bro. What makes you a nerd is being smart. That's what they call nerd. If you smart, smart. Smart yeah. and you not in the in crowd. Yeah, not in the in crowd. Not in the in crowd and smart. I, I can say one of the pivotal things for me was that I had an older brother named Yule. Mm-hmm. Ever called him YT. He was six foot four, dark skin, played basketball. How tall are you, man? Man, I'm like five nine. How you miss? It, how you miss six foot and your brother six foot? I, I have no idea. I have no idea. But he was, like I said, tall, he took all dark. Of DNA, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he took <laughs> all of it. And and literally, like you know, you watch those high school movies and you see people walk through in slow motion and all the girls falling out. Mm-hmm. That was my brother. Right. Mm-hmm. I was the nerdy kid behind him. That was, mm-hmm. But that go YT little brother. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, I mean, I, I kind of got put into that position, but I played my position. Though. Word. Yeah. That's wild. He's 6'4". You, how tall are you? Like 5'9". My He's brother like took the 6'3 and went to fix some cars and shit. I played <laughs> basketball. This motherfucker got my 6'3 being a mechanic. You know how bad I wanted to play basketball, yeah, man. Then my, then, oh, my, then my mom, man. Then my mom go find a nigga after my dad <laughs> that's 6'4". Gl- but if my yeah. sister's 6'1". But I'm I would have been a good six seven. I'm glad you ain't had a parents to be like, baby, you could be anything you wanted to be. No, no you can't. You, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you wasn't gonna make that basketball yeah, team. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, good cool job. story with that man is the fact that ninth grade year. Um, I don't know if you know Norm Ross. Uh, I do. Scam, yeah, I do. Norm mm-hmm. Ross, man, freshman year. Um, I went there. And my brother said he was the big man. He was a year ahead of me. Everybody respected him. And I went in to make the basketball team. I could really shoot. And I still can. Like, because I know I can't drive to the hole because mm-hmm. he was blocked with stuff. Right. So I try out for the team, man. And I tell you, man, like, I'm all in. I'm doing everything I can. And I remember reading the list at school when, you know, they put up. Yeah. You wore handbands and wristbands to the pr- – did you? Look at me. I read it. Oh, yeah. so, so I read I read it. And my man, name, my name, I'm like, I'm going through it. I'm like, my name's not on the list. And it crushed me bad because eighth grade, yeah, I didn't make it in sixth grade. I didn't make it in seventh grade. And I just knew I trained all summer. Right. All summer to make ninth grade freshman basketball. And I finally get there, man. I look on the list. My name's not there. Mm-hmm. And I go like, crap. And I remember I'm crushed. And Norm Ross was, um, I think, my history teacher or something at the time. Mm-hmm. And I had to write a paper. And on the paper, I wrote that I've always dreamed of playing basketball for Escambia High School. Mm-hmm. And he read the paper, mm-hmm. and next thing you know, he didn't put me on the team, but he made me the equipment manager. That ain't. I mean, that's the worst. But, but no, 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 no. It's not finished. It's not finished yet. Okay. Not finished yet. <laughs> okay. So right. he makes me the equipment manager, right? You tell me they put you out there for like a last second no, shot, no, 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 like you the slow kid. Let me, um, let me, um, let me, let me that's why. Okay. But, but because this is all going to be in the movie coming right. up, the nerdy kid from a scammy. This okay. is all a part of that journey. Okay. Uh, so I'm giving a spoiler right now. So they, they, um, I go ahead. They put me as equipment manager, and he tells me, all right. Toss the look. You're not as fast as everybody. You're not tall enough. Hey, you know, you suck. Yeah, you know, pretty much. <laughs> but he was like, come to practice, show up every day. Uh-huh. And I'm like, okay. And I'm, I'm I'm like, all right, okay, you know what? Because I really want to be here and I want to be a part of this team. Yeah. Man, I remember showing up to every practice, running every suicide, every gut. I never got put in um doing the scrimmages. Mm-hmm. I never got a chance to like actually pick up the basketball, but I did all the running, mm-hmm. all the exercise, all the hills, all the guts, the stadiums. So then the day comes, man, it's like the last three games of the season. And I never, we played Catholic high school. And before we played them, Coach Ross was like, all right, Thompson, suit up. You're going in tonight. And the whole team like, yeah, yeah, yeah they all hyped and everything, man. So I'm like, no, man, I'm getting a chance to go in the game. And I remember all um, getting dressed. I get my jersey number, number 12. It's clean, white. We playing this scam. Oh, I sport the number. Yo, yeah, 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 man. And for you know it, I get called. All right, Thompson, get in the game. And I remember coming down the court, man, and Warren Hanna passed me the ball. I catch it. And I remember the whole crowd standing up, man. I catch that Joker, man. I'm like, this, this is it. That's how they do the slow kid now. I shot that Joker, man. I mean, it went great rotation on yeah. it. Didn't hit nothing. Straight air ball. 
Listen, I respect Trey Elmo. Yeah. It, 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 the saddest thing, though, boy, is watching people walk away from that list, boy, when they make the team. Right. That's one thing I will say, though. I, I take pride in is that mm -hmm. no matter what, though, bro, I always, like, I, they, I never not made a team. Yeah. But sometimes not making a team is the best thing that could ever yeah. happen. And, and that so was, sure. that was, man, because that moment, shooting that air ball, being in that situation, seeing all my family and friends go like, dang, man, you should have stayed. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I took, and I remember staying after, man, after that game, and I worked my tail off. I worked on my shot. The next game we played Woodham, I think it was, it was at Woodham. We, I, think, yeah, I think it was Woodham High School. We played them. And, man, I'll never forget, I came off a screen, caught the ball. Man, I think I scored like nine points, three threes. Mm -hmm. And coach was like, I always knew you could do this, mm -hmm. but you just need to get out your own head. Mm -hmm. Because I always felt like I was um, inadequate. I wasn't equal mm -hmm. enough to all the rest of them because I was always – Equipment manager. I was mm -hmm. a guy that was actually keeping the stats. Right. But when I got the chance to get on the floor, mentally I wasn't there. But when I finally pulled myself up and said, you know what, man, you can be just as good as them. Right. And like I said, I hit three threes that game, scored nine points. Next game, I think I dropped 12. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, man, I ended up joining the AAU team. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think Coach Ross ended up leaving the scam. But, man, like the story just went on, man. But, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, man, it took that lesson. <clears throat> Yeah. Falling to me to get you know get back up and teach myself I'm just as good as everybody else. I'd be hot though if I run all them hills and stadiums and I got. Man, I, don't put I appreciate it though, man. It got me in shape because I thought I was training that summer mm -hmm. and I really wasn't. You know, you right. think you're working out, mm -hmm. but then you finally get around somebody and really work so out, you be like, damn, yeah, I wasn't right. really doing nothing. I was nothing. Right. in high school too, so I ain't played yeah. a lot till I got to college and then just I kind of developed into who I was. But yeah, so yeah. I understand that completely. Oh, Do you yeah. keep up with basketball now? Oh, man, I live and die, man, basketball, man. Cool, cool. I got a question. Yeah. I always wanted an all-male cast. I thought we was going to have another dude here, so I wanted mm -hmm. to ask this question in general. Mm -hmm. But we always have women on the show, so I never want to just bore them to death with sports oh, talk and talk stuff like that. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Where you were, I want to know how do you feel about KD's legacy. I'm curious to know. I want a dead serious conversation about what is KD to the NBA? What is his legacy when it's over? Um, end of the day, he will not be a top 10 player. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that he stained his legacy when he went to Golden State. Um, I think that at the end of the day, he, he's proven that without another superstar, he can't actually carry his team to the promised land. Yeah. And if you're going to be remembered as a GOAT, as a great in this game, you got to be able to say, nah, this is my team. I carry this. And now on that team with Steph, Steph carried. I mean, don't get me wrong, Durant did his thing, but when you got – Three people guarding Steph because they're afraid he's going to shoot a three and you just one-on-one -on -one and you KD, yeah, you can ball out. But, yeah, in the day, I think his his legacy is stained, man. He'll he'll, he'll go down as a good player, but he'll never be a great. Top 20? Right, so you say he's not top He'll make top 20. You say he's not top 10. He's not top 10, though. Okay. Cool. He's definitely not top 10. 10. Top 10 is off the top of my head. Uh, Jordan, mm -hmm. uh, Bill Russell, okay. Will Chamberlain, mm -hmm. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, mm -hmm. Magic Johnson, okay. Shaq, mm -hmm. uh, Kobe, Mm -hmm. LeBron, um, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put Steph in there because Steph, I just like what he's done now at this age. Um, I put Steph turned around, um, and then I probably say number ten. I probably had to put that man Bird in there. Uh, that's what, what my, was that? Was that like uh, just curiosity? Was that order how you? Feel? Not order, yeah. I'm just throwing oh, okay. him out. So it wasn't I was order. Like, you think LeBron is eight? That's yeah. rough. no, 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 no. Oh, I'm okay. just, yeah, just throwing okay, him out. Cool, just cool, that, cool. yeah, random. Yeah. So, but that's ten that I know for sure that are ahead of Kevin like Durant. It. Do, you, do yeah. you think all ten of those players are better players than him? I think they have better, um, mm -mm, better players. Overall. Oh, just better players. Yeah, like you pick all of them over him. Yeah, you building. The yeah, team. I would. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. If I'm building a team, I'm definitely gonna take Steph. If I'm building a team, I'm definitely taking Jordan. I'm definitely taking Shaq. I'm trying to think. I, you know? I probably would too, bro. And at a the end of the day, I'll take Elijah one over yeah. um over KD. Because I know in day, yeah, Elijah one gonna shut that, shut out whoever he guard, and he gonna <laughs> he gonna shake him to death mm -hmm. with them moves, the dream shake. So I mean, it's a and Kobe. Come on, I mean the names that I'm naming. Right. I mean, I would take all them over yeah. KD too. I can't argue with his yeah. list though. Yeah. yeah, and everybody I named has got the heart that has driven people, driven themselves to championship, yeah. driven teams to championship. Who would you take? Durant over in that list. I take Durant over everybody except for I wouldn't take him over LeBron. Um, I would take him over Steph. I wouldn't take him over LeBron. Um, I wouldn't take him over. Um, we have Will. You got Bill Russell. I'll take him over both of them. Okay. Um, Kareem. I wouldn't take him over Kareem. Mm -hmm. Kareem was something different. Uh -huh. You feel mm -hmm. me? I wouldn't take him over Kareem. I wouldn't take him over LeBron. Wouldn't take him over Jordan. Magic. 
I take them over Magic. Oof. I take them over Magic. See, the thing about it is like, dude. Uh, I, I, now, now, the argument is this, though, bro. For me, mm-hmm. individually, let's say if we were to just have a, a video game mm-hmm. and we do one-on-one simulation between all them players. He's perfect. He's going to beat all of them. He's perfect. He's going to beat mm-hmm. everybody. So my thing is like, I think that the issue with him is his personality, but his game. Like, there's, mm-hmm. there has not been a, a thing like him in the history of the league. Mm-hmm. He's an anomaly, just like Steph mm-hmm. is, just like LeBron is, just like Shaq was. Mm-hmm. He's one of those type of players to where he does, ev- like, bro, he does everything Steph Curry does at a, at seven foot tall except for sh- that stuff for him and the ball. Uh, he got a nice handle. He got a nice handle. He's got a nice handle. handle. handle, handle, a nice handle. Yeah, it's does. just, I think, I just think, bro, I think one of the things about being great is this. I always say that nobody considers that you're one, that no one considers you to be one of the greats until you say it first. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like Kobe mm-hmm. is considered to be one of the greats because Kobe said it first. And then Kobe went and won, but Kobe all, always had great teams too. Mm-hmm. Kobe has never won without a super, what we consider a super team. Every time Kobe won, we knew Kobe then was going to win at the beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. You had Shaq. You feel yeah. me? I think that, that Paul Gasol, yeah, that, that, that year, that was probably the weakest team. Knew that time. that yeah. team we did. Who, it, they, it, it was they nice. Beat they, they beat Boston. Don't get me wrong, they had a nice yeah. team. You know what I'm saying? Three seven-footers, buying them, owed them. Uh, Ron Artest, Fox, Derek Fisher, you feel me? Mm-hmm. So my thing is like, if you put Kevin Durant on that Lakers team, they win. Mm-hmm. They win. If you take Kobe and replace him with Kevin Durant, they win, bro. They win. I think they win. I think it's strong possibility, but then you got to always say when you call somebody a winner, because to me, that's what separates greats. Mm-hmm. You have to be a winner. And I think that Kevin Durant had Kyrie, James Harden, even though they was they was hurt. That you know, ain't that ain't. A, but you, I, I think I think championships are won though. Like I don't think people understand how big and how significant role players are around a, players like team. that. How yeah. it got, game. How, how championships got to be an individual thing? I have no crazy. Point. So when we talk yeah. about yeah. KD, team sport, yeah. Yeah, so when yeah. we talk about but KD, got, we start talking about championships. I'm like, bro, if that's the case, Bill Russell to go. Sure. Yeah, exactly. If I'll say it too if it's about well, championships. Yeah, but I don't think it's so much about. It's not about championships. Robert should be in there if that's the case. That's true, but it's not about he the championships. It's about are you driving the bus? Yeah, like you, you right. pushing mm-hmm. the bus to win that championship? He drove the bus in Golden State. He did not. No, 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 no. He got the MVP, 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 But again, it's easy to do that. Well, that's it. Yeah, really drives that bus. He he does not. He does, bro. It's Steph's team. It's Steph's team. It's his team. But listen. Draymond is the one that drives. Draymond's a, he's a, he's an engine. Not drive. He's an engine. Yeah, he but sitting behind that wheel is Steph Curry. Absolutely. It's yeah. So Draymond's the yeah. engine, but he's, Steph. Is. Draymond is just. And just I'm, I'm gonna say this. Draymond is just like Steph is Jordan. Mm-hmm. Draymond is Pippen. Right. You feel me? Like you without Pippen, ain't none of this shit happening. I will say that. I will say that. Without Pippen, I think Jordan would have never, never. If you remove, if you remove, I, I agree with that. If, yeah. you, if you remove any any piece from that Golden State Warriors team, bro, it's a hole. They in still it. win championships without Draymond. They don't win as many without Draymond. Mm-hmm. But you can replace you can replace Draymond's ability with two tougher players. You can mm-hmm. add some Matt Barnes and some yeah. and some some of them guys. It's not his ability that. though. It's it, the same. It's the no, same. No, his ability is his toughness. His he makes it's the here. team not a pushover. Right, but he's yeah. also one of the highest right. IQ basketball players to ever play the game. I'm not gonna say the highest, but he does <laughs> one of the highest. I yeah, say one, yeah, highest. one of the one of the highest. Yeah. bro, when you when you he knows how when, to play. When you six foot right. six, bro, roughly six foot six, six bro, five, really six five. Yeah, and you that you undersized, yes. and you can and you can play in that league, bro. Like this is the same thing that I, he, I'm, he, I'm he, not saying he's not a he's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah, Listen, right. Kevin First Durant, round. averaging averaging fucking twelve points a game. The reason why, yeah. the reason why I ask this is because <laughs> I, I think LeBron is the goat. I don't see how people debate it. I right. even mm-hmm. question people who don't like LeBron. Like mm-hmm. I, if somebody tells me they don't like LeBron, yeah. I question them as a human being. Yeah. Right. I like, put it like this. I got to I got to yeah. say this because I am the biggest Miami Heat fan in mm-hmm. the world. Mm-hmm. So my gripe with him is that he left us. That's good. I'm, I'm cool. Now with that's, that. that's that's it. I don't, yeah, 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 yeah. So but I don't. Some people who just don't like him, and I'm yeah, I don't like, like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, do. I don't. Yeah, it, that, that's my thing though. Yeah, I feel like this. If you don't like him, you can't like me. Yeah, he he, he way better of a human. You don't like him. You don't like, like nobody. Yeah, yeah, that man married to his high school. He yeah, his kids. Yeah, made his homeboys rich. Yeah. I fuck wild shit all the time. Like, <laughs> you, you you can't like me. Mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah. my point is, I think Kevin Durant is skill set wise. Like you said, if you make a game. It's the perfect game you could ever see. The mm-hmm. height, the the ability, the, the, the range. Yeah. Averaging right. 30 points on 12 shots. What so, the hell is that? But the so, only thing, right. and the only so thing that separates him, though, and he's going to hit us from yeah. probably every analyst in the world, is that thing in his chest. Nah, I ain't going to say I'm that either. either. I, I, I'm not a, I don't think it's hard. I'm not a heart person either. I don't think like, that heart. I'm not a heart guy either. Mm-hmm. Like, But what I will say is... you had heart. 
And I dropped nine, though. I dropped nine. But that's all you had. All I had was hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So when, when you play a game, they have other attributes other than your physical ability, right? Some mm -hmm. people say heart. Some people yeah. say awareness. I look at competitive nature as a mm -hmm. part of who you are as a mm -hmm. competitor. You mm -hmm. are a pro athlete. Your initial goal is to always get your family in a better position and always, become rich, right? Always, always. Once you have secured that, now it's all about who you are as a competitor, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Who? Kevin Durant has played with, let, let's name the stars he played with, mm -hmm. right? Russell Westbrook out the gate, yeah. who's a Hall of Famer no matter how you feel about yeah. it, right? Ibaka, James Harden. James Harden. Yeah. I'm just going by the big names. That's the yeah, yeah. James Harden, with. Kyrie yeah. Irving. Yeah. Uh, now he's played with Chris Paul, mm -hmm. Devin, Devin Booker. Booker. Mm -hmm. uh, like, who hasn't he played with, right? Yeah. And the only time you won a championship is when you went to a team that had only that lost nine That games. just won 73 the year I could have added before. anybody to that team. I could have right. added Jason Tatum. He would have won. I could have added James Harden. Yeah, you Randy have, Brown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. You could have added anybody to that team. They only lost nine games before you, bro. Right. What were you supposed to do? Yeah. So it's like, if that's your only championship, if that's yeah. the only thing that I've ever seen you thrive at with all of those skill sets, bro, mm -hmm. he fails everywhere else he goes. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and what it is yeah. is because it's the thing you say, bro. I think that every great lead, I don't think it's heart. I think it's um, that thing in you that, like, makes you, like, like you played on a football mm -hmm. team. Mm -hmm. There's something in you as a great player that when shit ain't going right, where you step up in front of the team, yeah. it's like, bro, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah he's yeah. never he that guy. It. Yeah, he's not that guy. He's he don't want like, that responsibility. I did, my th I did what I was supposed to do. Right. You feel yeah. me? So I don't think it's hard. I think it's competitive nature. I and give you that. What, and that's why I can't yeah. respect you like a great because – We've always learned this. Let's say the team beats you. Mm -hmm. I have no problem if you like LeBron or somebody else who goes like, I'm going to go build another team to beat that. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. But in no way in competitive nature do we say we get beat and we go join the, the person team that beat, that beat us. us. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, and yeah, that's no unforgivable. That's Come unforgivable, on, bro. You can't, you can't that's, accept that. That's literally void the competition. Right. Yeah. And you can't beat them, join them. It's not professional sport. And yeah. any, any average 30 points there still don't get no credit for it. And it's because mm -hmm. of the competitive nature. Like yeah. I said, you, you went to a situation the way you don't even have to be competitive. It's don't not competitive. Go. It's not competitive. Like you said, they chasing yeah. Steph around. Of course you're going to score yeah. 30, LeBron, bro. Yeah. LeBron has won some championships to where he had to, like, he had to work for him. Oh, it's man, like yeah. He yeah. overcame eyes to get him. Yeah. Like he said on yeah. his interview, man, he was crippled that last run. Yeah. Oh, yeah. said, man, all the shots, I was not myself. Yeah. 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 Right, so, yeah. yeah, so, but... LeBron has been a part of some some some, some super teams, but I do sure. think that it was still mm -hmm. a hill to climb. He mm -hmm. has bumped into some super teams, and that's why I give him credit as being a GOAT, is that mm -hmm. Jordan has never faced this, a Golden State. Jordan has never faced he a, a, a Boston. Yeah. He never yeah. faced a Boston, and I, and, I, and I look at it like, bro, like a lot of these guys, when you name the top 50 players in the NBA, in NBA history, most of them are playing right now. You feel me? Mm -hmm. it's, it's like 15, 20 that's guys a, from back a, then. That's a good point. Yeah, Most yeah. of them are playing right now, mm -hmm. so LeBron... Yeah. Has faced all of the right. guys who are going, and these guys like who Dwight are, Howard is in there, bro. And the yeah, thing yeah. about it is that yeah. the top fifty players now, right? These top will be they will be yeah. the top seventy five. Yes, yeah, top seventy five. They will mm -hmm. be the same top seventy five 10, 20 years from now. There's very few people right now that's going to squeeze in that top seventy five. Mm -hmm. LeBron won in the hardest era to ever win. You feel me? Nobody has ever seen a team like yeah. Golden State. Jordan went to, know, went to know what the hell to do with a Steph Curry or Kevin Durant. Jordan never seen a Kevin Durant. No. He's never seen a Steph Curry. People love it. He would have locked him up. Jordan, has, had, Jordan hadn't even, Jordan hadn't, I don't even think Jordan has seen a Tim Duncan. No. You feel me? Jordan hadn't seen none of these pe people. Mm -hmm. Jordan, like, he played against Kobe when Kobe was a kid. But, right. like, he's never seen anything like this, bro. The game is so advanced. But what I will say, though, is that I used to be one of those players that say that a lot of these um, old, old school um, teams wouldn't be able to compete with like these new school teams because of the way they mm. they're built. But then I watch um I watched the documentary and I watch um the US play against a lot of overseas team and overseas basketball is still very much like old school oh, yeah. basketball. Yeah, yeah that's and why it like, doesn't pass. You got a team full of all stars that yeah. are struggling with guys who mm -hmm. are bench players in the league and six men in the league, mm -hmm. foreign guys who play in the league, but they off the bench, but they come together and play the game in an old school fashion. Right. They better and stars struggle with that. Mm -hmm. You feel me? It's mm -hmm. different. It's it's basketball was a team game back then. Back then, you yeah. Feel me? Jordan yeah. was one of the first people to come along and it's just like Green the light. Team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the team. He was the first mm -hmm. fuck the team player ever. Right. <laughs> you feel me? Other than that, it was move the ball. The game was designed yeah. around ball movement. Facts. Point guard handles the ball the whole time. Mm -hmm. You feel me? We were running sets. Jordan was the first one they came and said, we're going to change the way the game is structured to mm -hmm. make you the guy and everybody plays off of you. Yeah. Now everyone plays like that. Yeah. You feel me? So it's just yeah. like it's hard to beat teams. So I will say back then, 
the team structure. Teams were harder to beat then because it was so much structure. And it was a team. Yeah. Nah, you got you got teams with like two good players and a bunch of right. But yeah. it's getting it's getting back to being a team. Like if you look at the Denver Nuggets, how they won, bro, oh, yeah. is that they have a complete team. Yeah. They have a star player. They mm-hmm. led by a foreigner. They, they got they a superstar star and a star. They got, superstar a, they got a superstar star. and a star. But yeah. around them, there are yeah. pieces coming off the bench. Mm-hmm. They got everybody on that team has the ability to hurt you in some form or fashion. They were complete. And mm-hmm. then you look at the Warriors when they were that team was complete. It wasn't mm-hmm. just Steph, Draymond, and Clay. Like, they was deep. A lot you of people don't. They had. Yeah, bro, you got, yeah. You, Sean, Livingston. Have Sean Livingston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sean Livingston. Yeah. Livingston. You got yeah. Matt Barnes. You yeah. got Barbosa. Harrison Barnes. Yeah. You got Barbosa. You got, yeah. you got um, what's the big dude, the um, center that. The white guy. The white um, guy. Um, big boy. Bo- uh, uh, Andrew Bogut. Like, you, yeah, they, Bogut. they had yeah. complete teams, bro. Mm-hmm. So, this super team thing that they put together, even with even when the Celtics went and put together their big three, they still had depth. They had Rondo. Tony big Allen. Baby. Big Baby. They had Tony Allen. Yeah. Those were complete my, teams. Uh, uh, Perkins. Yeah. Perkins, oh yeah. They, yeah nobody Perkins. has ever won a championship, bro, with just stars. Three stars and they win, bro. I, I can't think of a team that has won like that when, without going nah. down and seeing that they have depth. Nah. And this basketball is going back to being a team game now. Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Huh? Cleveland. Now, they had depth. That's where? They had they had Jr. Shumpert. Amon Shumpert. They had I will give you a Amon Shumpert. They had they had, yeah. they had um Jr. played a big role in that. They had they had Richard Jefferson, which is a veteran player yeah, coming yeah, out. Rich, the yeah, RJ, good. RJ was down. Uh, then they had Tristan Thompson. Was, they had Kyrie Irving. Yeah. They had Kevin Love. They had LeBron James. They was eight. They, they was, was eight. eight nine. Deep. Yeah. Richard Jefferson was not contributing. No, no. At a, zero. Yes, he did. Zero, bro. He was a good role player, true. though. He was a and, good and, role and, player. And contributions. He was just out there to know what he was but, supposed but to be. But see, the thing about the contributions yeah. go to the same thing what we was talking about with Draymond mm-hmm. Green. Draymond mm-hmm. Green come out and give you six points, but you don't win a game without him on the floor. It, it, so it's just like they... You can't compare Draymond to... to no, what I'm saying, what I'm saying <laughs> I get, is... Well, I get what you're saying. Yo, your yeah, impact yeah. does not have to be scoring. Sometimes your impact could be in the locker room. You might lift up a guy that was terrible that to make him play better. That was his own. And that's when UD was around for Miami. That is huge, bro. That's, that's why. That's why. Did. If you take yeah. him off the bench, Miami ain't in the finals. Oh yeah, UD, Ooh. UD, man. You lost Haslam. Yeah, they not going to the finals. Man, Haslam. Haslam. Yeah, it's yeah. just the way. It's the way. It's the way. Because it's they just, flopped I, in the middle of the season, and Haslam kind of like have a badge, bro. Haslam. They have a ba- they have yeah. a badge on the video game, bro, called General, right? And mm-hmm. it's just like Chris Paul is one of these people too. To yeah. where if he's on your team and he's on the floor, the game is just gonna move different. Even that's true. Got that's the ball, true. It's just because yep. certain people play yep. different with him. It's yeah. like Haslam got it. No, uh, no, it, Haslam has it. But I'm gonna tell you, they have two or three people on the right. team to have it. Haslam have it. Has it. Jimmy Butler got that shit in him too. Mm-hmm. Jordan mm-hmm. had it too. Jordan yeah. was one of those players, the bro. If you, I don't give a fuck how terrible you are, you feel me? When yeah. you out here with me, you are gonna do your job, <laughs> yeah. or you are gonna get fired. Facts. You feel me? Haslam yeah. is one of those guys where if he on the bench and you ain't doing your, he can get you traded. Right. Mm-hmm. So he just forced mm-hmm. people to play harder. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's, it ain't necessarily the country. That's why I said that's why every team that wins always. If you go look at every team that has won, there's a veteran guy on the bench like that. Yeah, yeah. somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah. somewhere. Even with the Warriors. Yeah. Hey, look, do you you plan on being? Rich at some point in life. You might be rich now, for all I know. Though you plan on being wealthy at some point in life. That's a, that's a general goal. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's the ultimate goal. You don't plan on getting no submarines though when you get all this money. <laughs> I'm just making nah, sure. Nah, right, nah, nah. So I'm like, happy getting in my um yeah. Dodge Ram outside. So it's if good you was a big that, you wouldn't have got into submersible. Heck no. Nah. Uh, go. You heck trying to see nah. the Titanic? Uh, heck no. Nah. I seen you the movie. I seen the movie. I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> that's what you're supposed to do when you're a billionaire though. You're supposed oh, to get yeah. in the tube. I don't know if you see oh, that. Oh, talk about boy Stephen A. I like Stephen A. Yeah, yeah man. I, I like I like Stephen. Where you ran to him at? Uh, New Orleans when he was at the All Star game. He grew back on me. Mm-hmm. Steve, he, he I, grew I, back I, on I me. I don't think he should ever grow off him. He did grow off him. He did. <laughs> he, but I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you why though. What you have to understand though is that the thing about a genius play is that mm-hmm. it don't look genius until it's genius. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like if you're doing something like if I if I'm on a secret mission and I'm and I'm trying to like infiltrate something, right? It has to genuinely look like. I'm on the other team's side. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But but you find out once I get close enough to my destination who I'm really for. Mm-hmm. So it's sometimes, mm-hmm. bro, it did like he he played this shit so smooth, bro, and so well that I have to tip my hat to him. It's almost like I owe him an apology. But you I think I think you giving him more of a game plan and he, I don't think he did none of that. No, I, 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 did you see the camera on interview on his on, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. So my thing is this, he did do a lot of that. He said it mm-hmm. himself. He said, bro. I understood. He said, He said. I understood the assignment. I understood that you have to play by a certain set of rules yes. and you have to be a certain way to get in position to actually have an impact the way I've had an impact. Yeah. So he knew yeah. what he was doing. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, from that angle. Uh, yes, he mm-hmm. understands if you're going to work for a white people, that's mm-hmm. what he's basically mm-h
I think there's a certain group of black people that have a, per, a problem, not a problem, but a difficulty understanding a black person. Does, does mm-hmm. that make sense? That's mm-hmm. not my issue, okay. though, no, but no, I got no, that. I know, no, I know no, where you you're going, though. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. There is urban black, and there's mm-hmm. just a black dude. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. He's just black. Like mm-hmm. People think that black comes with a movement and, mm-hmm. a, mm-hmm. and a dress and a sound, and mm-hmm. sometimes it's just normal. He spoke on that too, though. Black human beings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and I think that's what he is. I don't think he's cool. I don't think mm-hmm. he has the movements in the urban. He's not a dancer or a hooper. Mm-hmm. Or like, like, there's nothing cool about him. Mm-hmm. I'm just black. And I mm-hmm. think sometimes that comes off as sellout because we have this mindset that real recognize real. If you mm-hmm. wear your hat a certain way, you must be down. Yeah. If you got certain shoes on or certain clothes or your car look a certain way, oh, you must be with the people. And yeah. none of that don't mean shit. Mm-hmm. I think Stephen A., just like uh, my boy, um, he got a little bit more flavor, but uh, Shannon, Shannon Sharp. Right? Yeah. When people hear him talk, he is a backwoods country, yeah, he, oh, well-raised he, oh. Black human, mm-hmm. right? He wasn't yeah. raised by no ghetto mama, no hip hop, nothing. Mm-hmm. No, I am country, black, yeah. straight up and down. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes people get confused that with sellout mm-hmm. when he has a when he when he criticizes another black player. Mm-hmm. When we mm-hmm. you get what I'm saying, yeah. and I think that's the, what Stephen A. The, the cross that he bears. Yeah. We know he's not of the urban culture. He's mm-hmm. not cool. We can tell that in the hood he would have been corny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We all see that. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes people take that as, oh, he must be a lame. No, he's just a regular, he's just black. But, yeah. and, I, and it's okay to be that, too. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And he, he he speaks about that all the time. And mm-hmm. I, um, I that's not why I didn't like him. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I, I, I And I do actually think he's pretty fucking cool to me, in a sense. I don't think he's hip. Like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I do mm-hmm. think he's a cool dude. And I do think that um, he's one of those people, bro, that just like, I do think he, I do think he knew what he was doing, and I do know it because when you look at the climate of ESPN now mm-hmm. and what it is now, he's replaced a lot of white people with a lot of black people. He, man, he purposely, is, he's intentionally, he is in the mm-hmm. Hall of Fame of black yeah, people. Yeah. What he, I wake intentionally. Up, if, if Stephen A. was popular when I was a kid, if mm-hmm. that form of news was popular, when I, I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't be sitting here with y'all. Right. I yeah. would go be Stephen A. Right. Yes. I love to talk. I know mm-hmm. sports. I love a yeah. microphone. But that wasn't even a visual option to we me. We had right. Stuart Scott growing right. up. We did. Yeah. But he wasn't Stephen A. Stuart Scott wasn't Stephen A. Stephen I mean, he wants, yeah, he wants yeah. Stephen A. Stephen yeah. A is everywhere. He's yeah. on everything. We yeah. also see the money he makes. And, mm-hmm. and black people, we learn visually. Mm-hmm. So we see the rappers with money. We see the football players with mm-hmm. money. And that's what you strive for. If I could have saw a Stephen A as a kid, I would have just been a Stephen A. Yeah. And what's funny about that is Black people love Stuart Scott, but Stuart Scott is probably more, more, more mm-hmm. what more of what we think Stephen A. is than Stephen A. was. But mm-hmm. he, Stuart Scott never tried to be. He never cool. tried to be Stephen any of Stephen A. will try right. to slide in something right. that, that white people might think. Oh, you must be down, but all the black people know that, like, bro. That's not that. right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. We don't, yeah. we don't say that. Yeah. Right. Do, you know. Right. Yeah. And that that was my thing with him. I just I my issue with him is like I I hate when um. When there's obvious something is obvious, like racism is obvious, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you try to like make it like as if it's not, and you try to like cover it as if it's something else. Like there's a lot, there, there have been a lot of times where I watch that show where something is blatantly racist, and it almost takes it, it took the white like like you'll have a, he'll be having a conversation even when Max Kellerman was on, he would have yeah, a conversation, yeah, yeah. and it'd be something like. And Max Kellerman is saying what Stephen A. should be saying. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I'm just yeah. like, damn, bro, like, how did you miss that opportunity? Yeah. You feel me? And it's just like, as time passed, I understood that he was intentionally going around some of this shit sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just, bro, it, I think that, I think he's a lot smarter than I gave him credit for. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And I think he's oh, yeah. a lot doper than I gave him credit for. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, like you say, sometimes a motherfucker can make one move. Like, a motherfucker, like, it, it, we as people function like this. Somebody could do everything for you, but the second they don't do something for you, mm. they've done nothing for you. Right? Yeah, you feel yeah, me? Yeah. So it's just like I was, I'm, I'm guilty of seeing him in that light because I was a super fan of Stephen A. Smith at mm-hmm. first because what people don't understand, he did come in super conscious. But when they offered him, when he got his contract and they were offering him a new contract, when it was contract time was coming mm-hmm. up, he yeah, yeah, yeah. off of that shit. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. And he changed, he was, he was what Shannon Sharp is now initially. Mm-hmm. And then he switched. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. He switched it up a little bit. And then it's kind of like when he got his bag and he secured his his his, his place at ESPN. Mm-hmm. He's actually the I didn't know he was the um producer the producer of yeah, he first take. First take now. Yeah. Yeah, but that wasn't always the Yeah, it wasn't always, yeah. But it's yeah. just like now he's the producer. It's like mm-hmm. now he's it's like he went reverted back to where he was originally. Mm-hmm. So it was just like me, that was me just like one of them situations where like, damn, bro, you did you do one you do some fuck shit one time right. and mm-hmm. I ain't fucking with you no more. 
And it's just that's like everybody's done some fuck shit at some point. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, quite frankly, I think he started off on that. Mm-hmm. And that was his first show. And uh, I know him and Iverson fell out a couple times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but that's mean, one of them situations yeah. to where I'm just like, what, like, like he would like, Iverson, your, your, your dog. You mm-hmm. feel me? But you're on national television. You dragging him, dragging, dragging him when you could just yeah. not say anything. But, yeah. but, that's but not I, my understand, job. I understand. I understand. Oh, pick it's not up your phone job. and call him. I understand. Yeah, but it's not, not my job. I understand yeah. that, bro. But my thing is this, though, bro. Me and you are like this. Right. And if mm-hmm. you got something, like if you, even if you are a news analyst, you mm-hmm. feel me? It's you not. You not reporting on me, bro. Okay, cool. You not reporting on me. Okay, let's let's mm-hmm. do it. In the, I'm not reporting on your personal life. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. But let's just say I was a. I was a music analyst, right? Mm-hmm. And you my boy. You mm-hmm. make music. Mm-hmm. And I'm getting popular because of my music opinion. People mm-hmm. love to hear how I feel about music. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm honest and I'm straightforward. Mm-hmm. And then my dog drop a project. And it's not good. Bro, I'm going to say it's not good. But my thing, That's oh, not good. Oh, oh, I, I, I get what you're saying. saying. Yeah, it's I get what my you're job, saying. bro. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. not dissing but, you as a friend. Thing, yeah. I'm talking about your personal life. And I get that. His yeah. job is to analyze basketball. But my thing is this. Yeah. I, but my thing is this. If your album suck and nobody asks me about it, I ain't got nothing to say about it. But they asking him. He, I'm on TV every day to talk about hey, basketball. No, I, I, I was get, a situation. He did that. Well, he did what? He 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 did, interjected. He, he did, did interject in that himself. conversation. Yeah, he brought that up. Yeah. You feel me? Right. So my yeah. thing is that they ask you, what about Iverson's behavior? Because Shannon Sharp has to do it all the time. The mm-hmm. people that he loves, you yeah, feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. And he'll do it. And he'll he'll give you um, he'll he'll tell you in the beginning like this is nothing personal, but he this, that's a bad move. Right. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? Like he he like him and Le, he loves LeBron. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when he's asked about LeBron, he has to be honest. Yeah. But there's a lot of shit he ain't gonna say if he not asked. Oh yeah, yeah, he ain't gonna talk about it. Sure. So sure. that's my thing about Stephen A. Smith. He and he he initiated that Allen Iverson shit. Nobody asked him about that. Well, that's you why go full Iverson circle. Go full circle. Yeah. Look at Charles Barkley and Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. Why you think they ain't best friends no more? Because Charles, it, it's Charles one of the motherfuckers too. Just like bro, nobody <laughs> asked you to do that. Yeah. Nobody's gonna. I'm not gonna ever go nowhere. If your album suck, I'm not gonna go on the music. And, yeah. and, and, and we talk about all these albums, and I say, well, Alvin Taylor dropped some bullshit too. No, they didn't ask me that. Yeah, yeah but I, I, but it, if they it, asked me, I'll say, yeah, my dog could have came a little better than that. That shit was kind of weak. But why do I, I don't understand? But I don't understand why I got to do it. As a friend, I respect mm-hmm. your occupation, right? Mm-hmm. And if we're friends, and and this is why I, I love what Charleston White said. He said friends ain't shit because most people are only friends because they got to be fake, mm-hmm. and that shit hit me like a truck. Mm-hmm. He said a lot of wild shit, but yeah. think about it. He said most friends are only friends because they're fake. Mm-hmm. That means oh, wow. if you got on yeah. something I don't like or something that's ugly or something that look mm-hmm. bad or you do something that's trash, I got to pretend like it ain't. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, but see, and that's the only way we can be yeah. friends. And I've never been accustomed to that. So if I'm on a basketball show and my best friend hoop and he mm-hmm. put up some trash, you ain't got to ask me. My job is I analyze. Every, you don't ask me about these other players. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? I come on here every day and say, Jokic was trash last night. LeBron was trash. Last-. And when they get to my dog or when my dog played and that's the headline, even if it ain't the headline, mm-hmm. did you see uh, Chris played last night. I don't care. That's my friend. That was trash. Yeah, yeah because mm-hmm. you, but but see, this the difference between me and that though. I I do agree with that Charleston White White quote, right? Mm-hmm. But the thing about it though is that I'm gonna keep it a thousand with your ass. Yeah. But I'm gonna keep it a thousand with you because you're my dog right mm-hmm. here. I don't mm-hmm. have to. I don't have to bash you to the public. But, that, but that's but, my job, bro. I understand. I criticize basketball. I get it. But I'm my, not mm-hmm. bashing you personally. I get it. I get it, bro. Yeah. But the thing about it though is because like even if I got to tell you your album trash, right. it's hard for me to do that. Okay. So cool. my thing is. So my thing is like. If I can avoid doing anything publicly, I will. But if I'm put in a position where I got to do my thing, I got to do my thing. Just like I was in his movie, right? Mm-hmm. So if he felt like my part was trash, you feel me? He'd probably say, hey, Bone, you need to work on your acting. So if they're talking about yes. the movie and, and they're talking about, all right, cool, the bad acting, he's not going to say Bone was trash. But, you but, feel me? But because that's not his job to talk about bad acting. His job is to make movies. So even if I felt like an actor did a bad job, I'm not going to come on here and dish you. My job is just to make a good movie. I might not cast your ass mm-hmm. again, but it's not my job. But let's say you didn't make movies. Your mm-hmm. job was just to be a critic. A critic. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you, just, and you got your ass in a movie. Mm-hmm. Hey, bro. He still would call me and say, bone your sure. ass trash. And I'm going to say, right? <laughs> that, yeah, but that, you ain't going to volunteer it on the show. No, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. If I, I know, know you, morning, yeah. If I know you, know you know I'm, not, I'm not going to. But when yeah. that man get up, I'm going to call you and tell you it's trash. But I'm saying in the morning when my show come on, I'm going to tell these folks you But that's different, too. That's I'll take that yeah but see that, that's, that. that's what i was so wanted to see that. so okay. yeah. like, bro I'm not hot because of your take. I don't yeah. care about nothing you say. I'm caring. I care. I'm caring because Why of you. Call me, yeah, call, call me, me first. Yeah, call me, bro. Like, like we better than that. Yeah. And yeah, that's the same thing, that. bro. Like I yeah. tell people all the time, bro. There's nothing I will. I won't say. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you ain't around, that I won't say when you are around. Yeah. So if I told if I if I said your album was trash uh, in public, mm-hmm. I already told you it was trash. Mm-hmm.
agree. That's mm-hmm. all I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah. I don't, you can have any opinion you want about me, but just mm-hmm. let me know your opinion before you go talk to other people about it. Otherwise, so I'm not blind you are fake. Right. Yeah. Because you're going you to say that. Yeah. I can't argue with Because right? yeah. what he did was he said what he said in, pri- in public, but then you think you're an Irish and still cool and you bump into Irish and it's all daps and hugs. Like, no, bro, you could have called me before you said that. Yeah. Steve so said he realized he should have He did. Uh-huh. So he, he said yeah. he was wrong. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But that yeah. Charleston White quote is accurate as fuck. It, it, mm-hmm. It's super accurate. Mm-hmm. It's super accurate. I can't argue with that. Yeah. Yeah. But we um out, we are 55 minutes in. So the mm-hmm. thing we really came to talk about <laughs> and center this around was the sacred movie. And um, there's been a lot of, um, what's the word I'm looking for, boy? I be having brown Controversy. Oh, there's a lot of controversy yeah. Yeah, yeah, about yeah. how I things hate went. Love. I hate love. Yeah. Um, but I will say this is that um, I was privileged enough to sit in on the auditions. He invited me to come through. Mm-hmm. You feel me? He been showing me a lot of love. Like, me and him just met last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You feel yeah. me? But he been showing, yeah. he feel like one of my brothers already. It don't take, oh, yeah. it don't take years to find out if somebody real or somebody mm-hmm. going to be close to you. You feel right, me? Because right. you got people around you all your life. Mm-hmm. That ain't real than people that you met. You mm-hmm. feel me? So it's always been solid. He um, showed me number love, invited me to be in the movie. Then he mm-hmm. invited me to be a part of the auditions. Mm-hmm. And I will say that I've never seen anything like this in Pensacola history. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. know what the expected turnout was, mm-hmm. but yeah. we, y'all had over four thousand people come out. Yeah, it people? was it was it was a bunch. It, went all <laughs> it was it a started bunch. Started in the morning, and then, well, yeah. trust me, I saw it. somebody told yeah. me to go. I pulled up like, nah, I ain't. <laughs> that and line like, was long. Yeah. Insane, bro. Like, yeah. like. People you would never imagine walking in these auditions, bro, and they just yeah. made me feel like, bro, we can do anything in this city. It was the same thing yep. with you felt about Stephen A. Smith when you like you see something, mm-hmm. and then you know anything can be done. And he's even motivated me to be like, bro, like you can do anything. Out here. Mm-hmm. You just gotta be the one to do it. And it it made me realize like seeing something like that just makes me realize how many people aren't trying. Yeah, yeah. There's there's more people waking up every morning not trying than there are people who are trying. Mm-hmm. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's just like, yeah. all you got to do is wake up and try, bro. Mm-hmm. He, this man just said he was a nerd in school. He was mm-hmm. unpopular. Mm-hmm. And this man got the city eating out of the palm of his hand. So it's, mm-hmm. boy, how the tables turn when you have some energy and effort. But oh, yeah. um, auditions were crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, movie came out dope. Shout out to your boy. Oh, yeah. Your boy is the GOAT. You yes, your boy. Your boy shot the entire movie. Yes, right? yes. Your boy shot. Edited the- and shot it. Yeah, that's yeah. my brother. You yeah, feel me? I got an Asian brother. <laughs> you feel me? Your boy is the goat. Um, yeah, I'm pretty down. sure that's that was part of the white reason why I got invited was your boy. No, 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 no. But you feel me? We must be step cousins or something. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Nobody tell me shit. About it. It's all, it's all yeah. good. But you, <laughs> the director, producer, mastermind behind <laughs> the sacred movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna let you like. Who's yeah. on, bro? Go ahead. Man, um, the Sacred Movie, man, is is it's, it's, it's the movie that leads into the series. And I think that's something, man, I got to really clear up with the masses of everybody who's really now starting to follow the journey. Right. Um, it was put out as a pilot movie to introduce okay. this world that I created in my mind to the masses. Right. And I know a lot of people have been watching it because... I'm one of those guys that I'm not Kevin Durant. I don't read every single tweet or whatever, but I do read reviews. Mm -hmm. So a lot of reviews are like... Everybody does. Yeah, yeah, you know, and everybody's like, man, it's a lot going on. Like, there's like 12 different stories. But for me, my mindset was, okay, I've got 90 minutes to try to explain a universe that I'm creating to people that now that are microwave fed and don't believe in actually watching the stove cook a meal. Mm -hmm. So we had to jam all these different stories in here by introducing him real quick, sitting in the car, but you go like, okay, he's up to something. I see him making a move with this guy. Mm -hmm. And then we join to the next scene and, and a guy is, is arguing with his wife, but then he's stepping out cheating with the actual doctor. So it was so much that went into trying to put everything together in 90 minutes that I want everybody to understand that this was just the movie that's going to lead into an actual series. And you better not kill me in the first episode. Oh, no, 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 man. Try, I'm all right. I'm I get, yeah, yeah, yeah you, you're good. Well, we're going to have a problem. You good, man. You you got a couple. Um, and, I, and I need and I need a right hand man somewhere in, in <laughs> you feel me? Nah, I, 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 I bet not be no right hand. Oh, right really? Hand, right hand really? Man, bro. I want a sex scene right and I'm out. <laughs> I'm going to show this bod I've been hiding. Like, I'm, I'm buff. I'm sexy. Nah, I'm about to hit. That's hey, what they don't know. I'm going to show this bod one time. Give me a BMF scene, man. BMF scene. I literally need some muscle. I need a muscle. I'm going to show this bod one time and I'm out the way. Yeah, I need muscle. I don't know who that was on on episode eight, but Lord, I'm out the way. That's it. I would put a little sock in my thing and everything. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I got to be packing now. I can't, you know, I'm all right, but I got to come up with I got you, bro. I got you. The movie going to be fine. I got you. Yeah. I got you, man. Yeah. But, yeah, man, oh, like I said, the series, man, and that's the thing we, we wanted everybody to understand, man, because I know the news broke that um, people got confused, and they was just like, 
well, we thought it was a series, and the series was supposed to go to a certain platform. Right. But the thing people don't realize, we shot the movie already, so by the time we had auditions, we were already ready for the movie to do what it was going to do. Right, right. And the series was still yet to be shot. That's why we was doing castings and getting everything in place. My, so, my question, I'm not to cut you okay, off. Okay, go ahead. Go what ahead. was the confusion about where it was supposed to be on? and, and like, Because that's kind of like, I got some back-end stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll get to it. Go ahead. Yeah, he just kind of mentioned it. I was like, I wonder what the confusion yeah. was. Yeah. And I, I, I'll clear it up, mm-hmm. too, soon we get to that. Um, But the whole thing was, was that we wanted to take and put the movie out, which we did at the Wahoo Stadium, and we put it also at um, PSC, mm-hmm. um, which was a showing. And then we knew that it was going to be streaming through the distribution deal that we had in place, which was also going to be the distribution deal for the series. Mm-hmm. Now, when we went on um, WHBR with R- Ramika, Alir Ramika, I'm sorry, I'm missing her name, but Ramika, um, I will say the excitement of knowing that particular platform I released it and I said, yeah, man, y'all can look for it here. But I did follow up in other interviews and I did say we will be streaming on multiple platforms. And now it's starting to unfold and people are going like, okay, we thought you guys were just on Prime. No, we just ain't on Prime. Now you see it's on Tubi. You see it's on Reveal. And right now I'm sitting on other platforms that I know that we're on already. But, you know, people now, they're not going to go to nothing unless you tell them to go to right. it. Mm-hmm. We streaming on a lot of platforms. Right, right. But... I'm just sitting on it because I want everybody to see, like, we didn't lie. We have a distribution deal. Just like when you do music, mm-hmm. you ain't just on Apple. Right. You're on Spotify. Right. You're on Pandora. Right. The same works with movies, too. Once you get right. a distribution deal, you, you can be everywhere. Right. Because the game ain't like it was back in the day where it was Warner Brothers and Paramount, yeah. and you could only be at AMC. And the weirdest thing to me is that that's even got to be explained. Like mm-hmm. I, like I said, I, I just sat down on the back end. I didn't have any role in it, any part in it. Yeah. yeah. I just kind of watch and listen to people. You know what I yeah. mean? And it seemed like there was some enjoyment when difficulties came. Yes. And I thought that was weird. So yes, I'm like, man. Like, like, when it didn't do what, every, what somebody thought it was going to do, it was like, yeah. I see more celebration a little bit about that than yeah. you was enjoying the fact that this was going to be so major and how everybody was showing love. And it's yeah. like, man, that's like, I just, I just, I, I, I hate that. Energy. And I, and I, yeah. I, I, like, I, I think that's what it. bothers me yeah. most about our culture is mm-hmm. that we enjoy, but we, it's it's the same in movies though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like we that there is no there's every TV show we watch. Like I was on Ink Master and they was just mm-hmm. like, well, why wanted to show more about tattoos? Because you wouldn't watch it. Mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. like, bro, we love adversity. We love to see somebody fail at something. We love yeah, to see somebody we love train lose. wrecks. Mm-hmm. We love train yeah, wrecks. People yeah. go to NASCAR to see the crash. It's not yeah, the race. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People go to hockey to see the, see fights, the fights, not the game. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So exactly. it's like when that started happening. It's hard for me to defend it because I'm cool with him and I'm a mm-hmm. part of it. But yeah. it was just so weird for me to see mm-hmm. people like celebrate. They celebrate it, this yes, hard, man. Yeah. I'm, but I'm gonna tell you where a lot of that hit came from too, though. Is mm-hmm. that once he did those auditions, there were a lot of people that got turned around that couldn't be a part of it. Yeah, you can't be a part of something you gotta, that's winning. You gotta be glad that it. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, yeah. I've mastered this, bro. We do music. Mm-hmm. I've mastered this for a long time, bro. I understood that if I ever wanted to blow out of Pensacola or be mm-hmm. popular in Pensacola, I had to make everybody feel like they're a part of it. Mm-hmm. Even if they're not. Mm-hmm. You got to make people feel like they're a part of it. You ever had a homie that don't know none of your music, but the second you put him on a song, he know every word? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, every word. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because people aren't going to celebrate something unless they can be a part of it. Mm-hmm. But those interviews turned more people away than they added. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and, the, and all of that hate came after the auditions. It yep. wasn't beforehand. Mm-hmm. Right. So, I don't think people realized that a lot of people were sour that they didn't get to be a part of it. You know how, yeah. how, much, how, how it feels to be from Pensacola and they have auditions for something. Your dream is now to be an actor all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. Right. You come out with no experience, audition, you practice all week, you think you did a great job, so, and so then basically, you don't get so, so basically, you made the list this time. You wasn't, you wasn't the one looking for the name. You I made created the list. The name, see right. the, okay. yeah. right. I got you. But you know, yeah. people got to realize, man, it was over 107 actors and production team mm-hmm. that were actually a part of this project right. who had never worked on a movie before. 107 names that we gave an opportunity to. Mm-hmm. And that's overlooked and, and glanced over. Somebody asked me early in the interview, what's my favorite part of the movie? My favorite part of the movie is the credits. Mm-hmm. When I see people's no. names coming up who's never had that opportunity, mm-hmm. now their names are coming up around the world. In Bangladesh, in, yeah. in Bucharest, they can see their name being brought up. And that's because of the work that we put in and we did. So, I mean, at the end of the day, that was the enjoyment. Mm-hmm. But people took that away by trying to find something negative mm-hmm. to try to 
twist the story. Yeah, only way to not only way to not have negativity if that mm-hmm. that list was a million names and not a hundred. Oh, exactly. People just yeah. don't know how to celebrate other people's victories if yeah. they're not a part of them. Yeah. And it's just like everybody felt like they had an opportunity to be a part of it, and mm-hmm. you had to like it's almost like bro, I could sign a thousand autographs, but the last person who I don't sign the uh-huh. autograph to, I'm an asshole now. Right. Yeah. So it's like bro, I can only sign so many. I can only do so much. Mm-hmm. I can only help so many people. So the people mm-hmm. that don't get help on the outside and there's more people you can't help than you can but yeah. the adversity made it dope to me when it actually when it finally hit oh, I, yeah. I, I, I heard the hate and yeah. I just sit there and like I don't comment I just like I hate Man. that energy like yeah. I said but when it hit I was like go ahead what y'all got to post bandwagon back forth yeah. 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 yeah let me see how yeah. that goes cause now yeah. it's like oh he on he could probably help us again right. yeah. you know I, mean? I yeah. get another opportunity you know yeah. so it's yeah. just yeah. People couldn't wait for it to crash and burn. They was hoping oh, yeah. he stayed there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And for six months, man, like you said, you know, I, 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 I was in my cave. I think y'all boys seen me once. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I was just like, okay, I know right now this is my time to be silent and get everything lined up. Mm-hmm. And it taught me a valuable lesson because now I know the moves that I make mm-hmm. are going to be in silence. Mm-hmm. And when it's time to make the move, it's going to make sure it's going to stick mm-hmm. because – like I said, I popped out early mm-hmm. because nobody had ever really done a move in the city. And we didn't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. We didn't know that, okay, it takes five to six months for it to actually get uploaded because you got to go through all these checks. Mm-hmm. Like for months, me and him ran around sending in, okay, now we need stems. Now you guys got to do this. You got to change this. So finally, when we got it all together and I've learned and I now know what to do, but it didn't change the whole game. But mm-hmm. now, bro, if you come to me and be like, hey, man, how do I get on to 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 be Amazon? I'm a plug now. You got the blueprint. Yeah, because I've learned and I went through it, so that way I can help the next people that come along. Mm-hmm. Because it ain't about me just keeping it for myself, and I want to be able to bless people behind me and put people on as well. So that needed yeah. to happen to you, though, bro. Oh yeah, it needed I, I, to. I feel like every man should have everything and mm-hmm. lose it all. Oh yeah, so you can understand what oh, yeah. shit really is. You oh yeah, know what I'm saying. Oh yeah, you should have everything. And then lose it all so you can mm-hmm. understand that having everything is nothing, bro. Yeah. And then you'll understand who really around you and who really for you. So oh, many yeah. blessings aren't going to come to you because you got the wrong people around you. Exactly. God just cleaned exactly. house for you. Exactly. There was so many people exactly. around you in your corner fake loving Woo, on you, bro. Oh, man. Well, the yeah. way you feel me? And everybody yeah. disappeared. Them, that time that you just spent was probably the loneliest time you ever had outside of your wife and your kids. Bro, it's, it's a straight up truth. Yeah. You said, you're telling the truth on that. Yeah. I was by myself. It's just me, my wife, and my son, King. Yeah, that's it, man. Yeah. It was just us alone. By and, and the thing about it, it allowed me to actually hear my own voice instead of hearing the multiple voices all mm-hmm. around me right. because I shut everything else out. So you said it earlier when you talked about the popular guy. Oh yeah, you feel me? Versus being the guy behind. The yeah. Scenes, right? uh, yeah, you yeah. were the, you would. It's like you were the guy, and it's like you everything. You can't hear anything because you're mm. hearing everything. Exactly. Yeah. So it's exactly. Just like, but and then you learn that like at the end of the day, that's all, this, that list you just gave. That's mm-hmm. all you ever got, and all you ever gonna have for real. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You feel me? That's why I always say with men, I'm like, bro, it, it's so weird with this culture because men don't like women anymore. Like mm-hmm. rappers, like when you hear the rappers and you look, they don't like women anymore. But I'm like, bro, you the best companion you ever gonna have is a woman that's when right. you go to jail that's who gonna write you none of them mm-hmm. dudes gonna be around none that's of your right. friends gonna be around for the most part mm-hmm. you feel me you probably gonna be afforded one or two real friends in your lifetime mm-hmm. you feel me mm-hmm. one or two yeah and you're yeah. gonna come across hundreds of people that you think are your friends mm-hmm. right. you feel mm-hmm. what i'm saying so mm-hmm. at the end of the day bro it's like when you get good people in your life especially a good woman you got to take advantage of that oh, bro. yeah oh yeah they, at the end of the day that's all you got everything else is, is an illusion mm-hmm. everything else is mm-hmm. you feel me yeah a mirage bro is it's not real. So oh, yeah. you needed that to happen, bro, because it's like bigger things about to happen for you. You're about yeah. to be blessed. Oh, yeah. And oh, it's yeah. just like you, like I, I always pride myself on saying I'll help anybody who's going to help somebody. Oh, yeah. If you ain't going to help nobody, I can't help you. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just like now you know who to help and who not to help. You know exactly. who loyal you or who down for you and who not. Right. Yeah. You know, because, you know, I like I couldn't wait to message you and just say congratulations, <laughs> bro. Yeah. I, I know what you was going through. I know how you feel. I've been yeah. there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But you needed to go through this period. It's a dark time, but it's it, it's yeah. light at that in, in the tunnel. Anytime you go through a tunnel, it's light before you go in, yeah. and it's real dark. And when you get to the end of it, you see the light again, and you out of it. Right? Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, it, and it, it really hurt me. I didn't. It wouldn't necessarily hurt me, but a lot of people that were around me that were close, mm-hmm. I know I had built such a family atmosphere mm-hmm. with, with the whole production and, and even my manager of the year family mm-hmm. that when I did disappear for those six months, and you know, a lot of people say I disappeared. No, I really disappeared for six months mm-hmm. to talk to nobody. And a lot of those people were hurt because they just like, man, you know, it was you Rico every day, mm-hmm. you know, and it kind of hurt me to hurt them, mm-hmm. but I knew I had to step away for that time facts, facts, facts. to get to where we are right now. So I made them great halves new. Woo! 
<laughs> bro, bro, like all oh, this right here, well, man. I'm just I like came up the stairs. I didn't even know who he was. Yeah, man. I said my boy been in the hole. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, my sir. boy yeah. got a new hairdo. My yeah. dog different size. Everything. <laughs> I said, boy. But sometimes you got to go through it, bro. You got oh, yeah. to get to it. So oh, it's yeah. just like I commend your strength, bro. I commend thank you. You like just going through that to get to where you are now. And it's yeah. extra, it's like this is just this these are stories we'll tell when you become. One of the great producers. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, you got you got yeah. what it take, bro. You got yeah. the right team around you, and it's like, yeah. bro, you did this with one person. Yeah, like shooting it. Yeah, like these you you made you, bro. You put together a complete movie. Yeah, and it's just like sometimes I be wishing people could be in the studio session to see how certain shit came about. Like when mm -hmm. we dropped the mixtape. We did a whole entire mixtape in twenty four yeah. hours. Wow. wow, you feel me? And it was the best project yeah. out. Yeah, we did some twenty four hours called the twenty four hour mixtape. Wow. But if people could have been in. Yeah. To see how we did that, yeah. yeah. It would have been more impressive. So it's wow. like people are gonna watch this movie and nitpick certain things like mm -hmm. we do with every movie. Mm -hmm. But it's just like if you could see how this was done and the resources we had to do this, yeah, you would see how impressive it was. Yeah. So I just can't wait till you get like until you grow and you mm -hmm. can show people like what you're really capable of. Cause I just feel like this is like yeah. the tip of the iceberg. Oh yeah. That you, are yeah. really capable of. And yeah. like I said, you've inspired other people, including me, mm -hmm. to like just do something different, bro. And you and oh yeah. You're gonna open a lot of doors for a lot of a lot of people. And I just, you know, I, I wish you much success. But thank you, brother. You can, thank you. Um, thank you, man. Go on the plug, like talk talk more about the movie and mm -hmm. what else you got coming going on. I, I got yeah. a question first. Okay. I, I I'm curious because mm -hmm. as a person who's completed an album, like it, mm -hmm. it's one it's one thing for a person who never made like I've never made a movie right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. when I watch it I'm gonna have my opinion of what could mm -hmm. be done and what mm -hmm. should have happened everybody got that whole like yeah. they, like they know yeah. what mm -hmm. they would have done right yeah. but as the person who completed it as the person mm -hmm. who put it together do you watch it and see things that you feel like I could have done like if I could go back I would have done that different I would have done that better right yes like what what parts of this do you see and be like you know I would have done this different um it's, it all starts from the top man mm -hmm. I, I believe that I think my budget, if I actually had an actual running budget to do this, um, it would have made it a hundred times better. As he said, like we shot this in, I think 11 days, 11 days. The and whole I, thing, just 11 days. Yeah, 11 days. We shot a 93 yeah. minute movie, man, which is nearly Talk impossible. With all those people, yeah. working parts and people. Yeah. And here's what made it even tougher was the fact that I would see some of the extras on set and I would tell y'all, boy, hey, I'm going I'm to get him a line. Mm -hmm. I was creating lines so people would actually be like, you know what, man? He gave me a line. Mm -hmm. and that's the hard thing to get in the movie is yeah. a line. You can get in the movie, yeah. right? but to get a line, yeah. that's what makes you an actor. Exactly. You ain't an actor till you got lines. Exactly. And I wanted, and I wanted to bless people, man. And, and you, if you watch the movie, you're going to be like, dang, why has he even got that guy talking? But I gave everybody, 90-some people, mm -hmm. Try to give him a chance. But for me, when I watch and I'm gonna look back at this 10 years from now, I'm gonna be like, the only thing that could have made this better is I would have had an actual budget. Because I'm gonna know, like, by the time we get 10 years from now, I'm gonna have a hundred million dollars to play with. Right. And I'll be like, well, now I'm making Mission Impossible 37. You're gonna have nine, with, nine, with that's, bones. That's what you're yeah, gonna yeah. have me jumping off the yeah, thing. Yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, flipping the car like Vin Diesel. <laughs> like how he survived. Right, right, right. Yeah, because yeah. I got military movies, yeah. man, I wanna work on because I was in the military, mm -hmm. did that, retired from it. Um like I said, I got my course my high school moving nerdy kid from a scam y'all want to do. Um, and I know we're working on something coming up here in July, a um, little passion project mm -hmm. that I did a play for that we're actually going to turn into a screenplay. So, man, I got a, I got a plethora of ideas. Answer, man. answer this, right? This is a question I have, though, mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm a firm believer in that. Um, no, I think people, I think we all have, I think a lot of people have great minds. Mm -hmm. But I think um, when it comes to stuff like writing movies, right, mm -hmm. like, I'm getting into writing more stuff. This, I, it's always been one of my dreams is to like go from, because I'm aging out of music, you feel mm -hmm, me? Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to go into film and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But I feel like the best movies have teams of writers, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Because there's always, like if me and you sit and I brainstorm something, mm -hmm. you could always add something to make it dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. At, at any point, do you um, have any intentions on creating like, writing groups of people to come on and help you create different things because like if I like if he was not a street dude and he did a street movie mm -hmm, there's gonna mm -hmm. be a lot of inaccuracies in it yeah. so he has to bring in someone who's well versed oh, in that, yeah, 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 that yeah, yeah, yeah. so that way yeah. it doesn't sound the lines ain't corny or certain mm -hmm. things ain't coming off right you yeah, know what I'm saying yeah, I get so it. it's just like is that something that you have intentions on doing 
mm-hmm. in, in the future because a lot of people have projects that they're working on and they become their babies and they mm-hmm. become personal and they become selfish with it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, feel yeah, me? yeah, yeah. Like there's some rappers that won't let you give them a hook or nothing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They got their own stuff, yeah. Right. You feel me? You're not allowing anybody to mm-hmm. influence what you're doing so you're going to age out at some point. Yeah. You feel me? But I think there's so many characters in the movie. You may have to. You have Headside to. characters. Yeah. Have some, like the main yeah. focus, would, I, I mean, I would yeah. think, I'm just spitballing, mm-hmm. would obviously be you. But mm-hmm. there's so many storylines mm-hmm. you can build off some of right. you know, some exactly. else I right. imagine yeah. right. writing to. Yeah. Right. And I don't think, like, there's very few people who just sit and do a whole movie, like, write a whole movie themselves. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, award-winning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mean, it's rare. It's a rare thing. It's rare. Yeah, yeah it's, rare, it's rare. You got Aaron Sorkinson and people like that, man, that mm-hmm. are just, like, geniuses, but, you know, with the pen. Yeah. But mm-hmm. for me, I look at people like, and, and shout out to Tyler Perry, man, for doing what he's doing right now. But you can look at all his storylines and you can see him starting to get diluted. Mm-hmm. And his, all his content, he's not allowing other writers to write for him. You can feel it's a Tyler Perry yeah. movie because yeah. it's like too much of you is here. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah, every exactly. movie starts to feel the same. Exactly. I want to be to the point, man, where now I can create a room of writers mm-hmm. and be like, okay, here's the project, guys. Let's work. Mm-hmm. Right. Let's make it happen. I don't want to write everything. I don't want to direct everything. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to put other people in position because mm-hmm. you're not a king if you're not creating other ones. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that. And then in the day, man, I want to be a king. Mm-hmm. That's my whole dream to be able to create uh, create other kings in the mm-hmm. world. And yeah. I can't do that if I'm writing everything myself, directing sure. everything myself. And if you are gonna be that guy, you better better be a hell of a student. Um, oh, yeah. I, oh yeah. I was gonna shout out Evil G because um. Oh Evil G. You gave yeah. me an opportunity yeah. to help choose who scored the movie. Yeah. And I found. I, Shout out to Evil G. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I was like, bro, I'll pay for the score and just yeah. let me pick it for you because I already yeah. know what he going to do for this oh, movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know yeah. I, mean? I was lucky enough to kind of see it before the sound, and I, mm-hmm. I sent it to him, and I'm like, bro, whatever you need, bro, make this, make magic, bro. Oh, yeah, he did. And he too. made magic. He now, from your movie, him. though, he's scoring other movies now. That's what he's doing wow. more than producing now is scoring oh, movies. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Bro, he's crazy with it. That's Insane. Dope. He was playing some stuff that he... um was scoring for um, this film company, bro. Mm -hmm. And, like, usually, bro, they bring in orchestras and all kinds of shit with these movies. This man is one man in a room, bro. Uh And if you could see what he's done in this movie, your movie opened up for him. Yeah. And he scores, bro, he crazy with it. Wow. I can't wait for him to do my stuff. Wow. He's dumb with it, bro. Like, like so, yeah. shout out to Evil G. Shout out to him. Yeah, for real. listen to the the movie, it Mm -mm. it sounds amazing. Everything is, like, properly placed oh yeah and like you say i can only imagine if you had a bigger budget Woo, but man. what made me bring yeah. him up is that he's a producer that he um he has the ability to kind of not have a sound when he don't when, when he mm-hmm. when he wants to get outside of who he is he can trick you and you don't know who it is sometimes right mm-hmm. but that just comes from being a student and working with other guys and having other producers around mm-hmm. so it's the, that's what made me ask that writing question oh, yeah. because it works yeah. the same thing in the music world if you want to create something new you have to Bring in other influences. Yeah. Everything starts to sound stale or the exactly, same. Exactly, exactly, man. And we want to, we want to continue to evolve. Mm-hmm. We want to evolve, man, as a production company, as as a team here. And that's what I love about working with y'all, boy, and, and the people that we have because it's like we're gonna grow together. Mm-hmm. You know, as you see the next film we put out, you're gonna be like, dang, that's better than the last one. Mm-hmm. And then right. we drop the next, one. that's better than the last mm-hmm. one. And that's what I want. I want to keep getting better, man. I don't want to be stale and be a one hit. Hey, man, you did that, but. Yeah, everything else suck, but yeah. nah, we we, we want to grow. That's right, so grow. you want to appreciate like your mm-hmm. first productions, but you want to look back at it yeah. and be like, boy, that's terrible. Yeah, I've gotten so much better. I've grown oh, yeah. so much, and yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. What I will say and what I will add, and then I'll give you a chance to plug whatever you got to plug before mm-hmm. you close. Uh, sometimes I enjoy being an outsider more so than an insider. It's mm-hmm. easy to ch- root. I won't, I'm gonna say chilly, but it's easy to root and support when you're involved, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. As a person who's not involved. And I was able to just see the hate, just see the, you yeah. know what I mean, the negativity coming from. I'm, I'm happy for you. I just Thank you, bro. You. Thank I'm you. Proud of you for, for doing. Like I don't think people realize just how epic, just some <laughs> shit is. Like yeah, you know right, what I mean. Right. Yeah. The average person can't even mentally think how to start to make a movie, yeah. let alone complete one, let alone get one out like there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I want yeah. you to understand what you did, no matter mm-hmm. where it goes from here, yeah. is legendary in itself. Thank you. Thank Everything you. from here is icing on the cake. I hope you reach all your goals, but I want you Thank to know you. from today forward, mm-hmm. you have accomplished something that the average person will never accomplish. Appreciate you. That's number Thank one. You. Number two, people don't necessarily give you time to grow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. People see your first production. They don't understand nothing about budget. Yeah, they don't understand yeah, nothing about eleven yeah, days. Yeah. So they want to be critical of something, mm-hmm. and they don't even know where the end goal is. Right. Yeah. So when you get to where you're going, I, I don't want 
because I, I do this from sometimes. You know, mm-hmm. it's easy to harbor mm-hmm. negative feelings and mm-hmm. stuff like that, but just use it as your motivation. Those yeah. experiences that he just talked about that you mm-hmm. went through will literally help you focus on all your success. Yeah. Now you know who's here for you. Now you know no matter what you create, no mm-hmm. matter how family-oriented things seem, a yeah. lot of people are only around you because of what you can offer. You mm-hmm. can make other kings. You can offer them opportunities. Yeah. But the people who were there for you and shit didn't look like it was going well, mm-hmm. that's the only reason why you wake up every morning and create what you create. That's and right. I wish you all the, the most success, bro. I'm, I, I root for people in general. Thank so you. even not knowing you, I, I'm... Yeah, amazing. But now you know me. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And I'm and I'm yeah. I'm I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna leave you with something that I got from when I was doing TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the producers told me something that stuck with me. Mm-hmm. Don't read the comments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't read the comments because yeah. all they're gonna do is deter you, bro. It's like what's funny about comments is that you can drop a photo. This is how the world works. You can drop mm-hmm. a photo and have a million likes and a million comments, mm-hmm. right? And and ninety nine percent of those are positive. You feel mm-hmm. me? The only ones you're going to remember are the negative ones. That's right. That's you feel right. me? Human and, nature. That's right. right. Human nature. That's but the right. thing about it, though, is you can't get too high or low on what people think about you. Mm-hmm. You just, you, if you don't read the comments, you don't know. That's right. And it just, it doesn't deter you from the mission. It's like, if I know yeah. I'm going this direction mm-hmm. and I don't see none of the distractions, it's almost like VR, bro. I was doing VR in Vegas. Uh-huh. I know I'm in a room, mm-hmm. right? I know nothing's going to happen to me. Yeah. But they had the VR thing where you put the VR on and you it's like you're on the top of the building, you're scaling the building. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's like you're on the edge, bro. And my mind couldn't separate the fact the VR really that I'm really here. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. like, my heart's racing like I'm about to fall off this building. Right. I have to mm-hmm. take the headset off. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. That's how them comments work, bro. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? It's almost like you know what you're trying to do, but it's like when you get in them comments, bro, it's like putting that VR headset on, bro. You start seeing shit that ain't there and start feeling mm-hmm. things that really don't matter. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So it's just mm-hmm. like stay out them comments, bro. It's I will. I focus will. on your mission, bro. Do what you got to do. Yeah. And and just stay out the comments, bro, because oh, yeah. the, the negative opinions are the ones that stick. Yeah. If you allow them to. And we all mm-hmm. human. That's why everybody love to say, man, I don't, I don't be on social media. I don't watch all the basketball players love to say they don't watch the sports shows. <laughs> oh, yeah, lie. right. Every yeah, right. Yeah, right. They watch it. And that's yeah. why you hurt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kevin Durant, one of the ones like that we talked watch about him earlier. Yeah. You watch everything. That's uh-huh. why you're always in your feelings. That's why you so that's why he's so like mm-hmm. like he has this this energy about him. We don't even know him, but you can feel like people we all yeah. him. But he got an energy about him that's just like almost like he got this. I ain't, I don't want to say hateful, but it's just the thing to where he just like feel like he's always being attacked or he always got mm-hmm. defense. I'm, like I'm like, no, bro. Almost, like, yeah. yeah, I'm like, yeah. bro, that comes yeah. with what you do. Well, you feel me? Like, mm-hmm. you're a professional sports player. Like, people yeah. are going to have opinions about you. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's just like, all you get on him to do is cry about the negative ones. But you never hear anybody talk about the positive ones. Right? Exactly. All we do is complain about the negative ones. Exactly. Like, when, even even in this show, we talked about everything. The only thing we talked about mm-hmm. was the things you went through on the negative side. Yeah. You yeah, get what I'm saying? Because yeah. that's, what, that's, that's what's entertaining. That's what people yeah. want to hear. Yeah. And that's why our mind yeah. go. But yeah. there was a lot of great things said about the movie oh, yeah. too. Oh, you yeah. You know what I mean? And there was oh, yeah. a lot of people who were extremely happy for you, but that's mm-hmm. not what we focus on because that's not what gets the numbers. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so yeah, it's just yeah, like, yeah. and a lot yeah. of people just hating just to be seen, bro. They really don't have Oh, yeah, them. yeah, yeah. I've learned that. And I've it, learned that. It makes you relevant. Yeah. Like if I can argue with somebody who's somebody and they acknowledge me, I'm somebody now. Yeah, yeah. Facts. But if I if I don't pay you no mind and I don't read the comments, then you remain nobody. That's, That's why I say That's I don't it. read the comments because I end up arguing with somebody who's nobody. Uh huh. Because I can't help it. Yeah. You feel me? So I just yeah. have to stay away from it. That's why I tell all my friends, don't send me no screenshots. Don't send me nothing, man. Nobody yeah. saying I don't care. Hey, I'm good. Yeah. yeah, yeah don't send me that. You know, yeah, yeah, don't send it to me. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. But but it's one thing. It's mm-hmm. one thing to mm-hmm. have an opinion yeah. about some and not like it. Yeah. But what makes you a hater is when you try to force that opinion on other people. Oh, yeah. I can not yeah. like something and it don't make me a hater. But, but yeah. when, I'm a ha- when I don't like something and I try to make you not like it that's too, like, yeah. that's some hating ass shit. Yeah. And it's like he went out. My thing is like, out of, and what's funny though, I think the biggest issue was that seeing somebody do mm-hmm. something this big mm-hmm. and you have no parts in it and yeah. it ain't none of your people got no parts yeah. in it. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Like and you gotta you trying to figure out a way to tear it down. Exactly. If you feel, but if you see if you see him in a regular setting, you know he's a weirdo. So just because yeah. you go to work, you still like a weirdo. bro. Like, like just and my there. thing is like there yeah. we've had we've had murders, we've had mm-hmm. rapes, we've yeah. had home invasions. Right. Your ass ain't went and personally investigated none of this. None of that. But when somebody drop a movie. You go investigate the legitimacy of it for three days straight. Without, yeah. without, ain't nobody, <laughs> ain't, no, ain't, nobody. ain't nobody at the station right. told you to do this. Yeah. And man. what's funny about that station, bro, is that 
I've had stuff like turkey <laughs> drives and stuff like that. Even mm-hmm. when the Eat Master thing came, mm-hmm. I what the, the beautiful thing about it is I had a plug at the top, like the, the mm-hmm. boss boss, mm-hmm. my dog. Yeah. So it's just like anything I call her for, like I have a crew pull up. You feel yeah. me? I ain't wear that out. Mm-hmm. But she was like, I have a crew pull up. And they used to always pull up. But it was other people who were working at the station who had to report this shit that didn't even want to report it. She fighting uh-huh. them tooth and nail on the doing the shit she telling them to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And it's mm-hmm. some of our people who be doing the hate. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's yeah. just weird to me. But I'm like, yeah. all these other stories, like y'all got stories about puppies and shit like oh, that. Oh, yeah. That y'all can't wait to run. Yeah. But it's like the first black person to ever be on the national stage that's not an yeah. athlete. Yo, you don't want to report on that. It's weird, bro. Yeah. They, they but that lets you know. But but what you find out real core, real quick, what the core of this city really is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you feel know I me? Mean? Mm-hmm. And you find some far too often black people have to re- be reminded yeah. that, bro, like, like this. It's some it's some yeah. it's some hateful shit going on behind the scenes. It is. I, but I can't even flex though, bro. I get yeah. off. I, even I, this is what really like got me. I'm 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 a little twisted. So when I'm sitting there <laughs> on the auditions, uh-huh. I'm getting off. Mm-hmm. Oh, just a black man having so much authority over other people. Right. <laughs> like they in there auditioning, right. they twisting and twirling and acting their heart out. Right. And yeah. a black man got the final say yeah. on if you're going to be successful or not. Yeah. Like, I asked somebody, I said, man, this man wild. Yeah. He had no intentions of doing this. Yeah. Would you cut your hair for the movie? She like, right. um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. He like, I remember that. I, said, I remember that. You good? I said, look, next. I said, yeah. this man, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I said, man, it's hell. But I, I got off on that, bro. I was like, yeah. oh, this is a beautiful situation. Because oh, there was yeah. more of them than us there for real. Oh, yeah, it was. Like crazy. Yeah, it was. But you don't think somebody sit on the opposite end? Absolutely. The opposite? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. A thousand mm-hmm. percent. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. that, that, that's exactly what I'm getting yeah. at. Yeah. And it was just crazy. But I will mm-hmm. say this, though, on a positive note, I didn't realize that there was so much talent here, bro. There mm-hmm. was some people yes, who were yes, yes, yes. so kids, fire, bro. Little kids too. So fire yeah. in these auditions, bro. I'm just yeah. like, what the like, bro? Yeah. Like we really be like, Basically, we got so you, know? you so you audition? Huh? You audition? No. No, he already a part no. of it. He no. already And I wanna take my scene. Cause I was yeah. gonna cause I was gonna say like yeah. I wanna see I wanna see what your uh what do they call it when you audition? What's the with it's the, a term you supposed to uh, monologue. 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 Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I would yeah, love yeah. to see what your monologue is. I would have killed it though. Yeah. Man, you wouldn't have came in there just Man, listen, bro. I will say this though, in my in my opi- in my yeah. no in my opinion, watching the movie, mm-hmm. I've never acted before in my life outside mm-hmm. of music videos. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Watching the movie, bro, you can't tell that nobody in that movie has been acting longer than I. But have. I ain't saying yeah. I'm not saying yeah. that. I'm just yeah. talking about yeah. the monologue. There are some famous actors who say they can't audition, this. but uh-huh. they can act. I would just it. auditioning. Nah, I don't believe. I'm, it. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. You can go in there and give me a red a random one minute monologue no. by yourself. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. And I'm a, and I'm gonna tell you. I would you, love to see that. I would love. I would pay. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell, tell you how I know I could uh-huh. though because uh-huh. I had people that did audition right mm-hmm. that I was practicing with and mm-hmm. I did monologues with them and I'm gonna tell you why I did the monologues because mm-hmm. I have a character that appears at the end mm-hmm. and I understand that I have to get better so mm-hmm. I'm one of them people that like bro I do monologues just sitting around in the house just fucking off. Yeah, I talk to myself mm-hmm. all day. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like mm-hmm. I mean, just like actually acting. But just you like, do it even on, even yeah. and all it is is regurgitating the scene from your favorite movie. Yeah, that's nothing. You feel me? No, that's nothing, bro. And that it's like I performed. It. I, listen, bro. I performed in front of thousands of people. All it is is really yeah, being comfortable in, in your skin in front of people. It. it is, bro. It's, it translates easy. They, they I'm yeah. telling you, it I've seen major actors, like hundred million dollar mm-hmm. actors, where uh-huh. they are terrified of audition. Absolutely. And they'll yeah, go some are, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Right. But I, but I think I think some people are just naturals too. Because when I mm-hmm. say a lot of people did great, there were people who never acted before. Yeah, sure. That came in, and I'm just like. But I just, I know I'm a natural at that type of thing because what it is is this. It's just like art. I was telling my son earlier, he sent me mm-hmm. a picture of something and he was like, this hard, dad. I said, I need to upgrade your eye for art so mm-hmm. you can become a better artist. Right. Yeah. I think if you are a great critic of something, it allows you to be better at it because it's almost like you have to be able to see it in order to do it. Sure. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to recognize it in order to emulate it. Mm-hmm. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? So right mm-hmm. now, you know what a great comedian is and a great a great actor is. Mm-hmm. That's what makes you naturally funny. Sure. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So if you went into acting and you know exactly what a great actor is, you feel me, and the things that make them great, not necessarily watching Denzel and knowing Denzel great, but mm-hmm. knowing what makes Denzel great, playing, paying attention to the small mm-hmm. details yeah. Yeah, what yeah, make yeah. detail yeah. Denzel great is what gives you that eye. So now when you're working on your shit, you know mm-hmm. what to pay attention yeah. to. Yeah. You feel me? So it'll yeah. make you a better actor. Now yeah. Yeah. I, I, I know see I know, want to see this I know if I go to yeah. acting school, <laughs> you can talk. I know you got all the right stuff to say. I got like, a monologue <laughs> monologue next podcast. Okay, next right, podcast, you'll come on do a one-minute monologue. Absolutely. You better cry and everything. <laughs> I might. Nah. I might. 
Hey, Look. hey, we'll see. I'm we'll do see. A one minute monologue. We'll see. You gotta do one too, though. Oh, but I, but that's I'm a fool though. If you that's ask cool. me to do something, I do that. I do that all. I'm doing that on here now. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Like yeah, I'm, I'm an idiot in general. What's funny though yeah. is I'm, we sit up, bro. We sit here now, mind yeah. you. Most mm-hmm. podcasts are structured, bro. Sure. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. still feel like we have one of the best podcasts in the country, oh, yeah. bro, and ain't oh, yeah. nothing structured. So if we sat down and structured this, mm-hmm. nobody would have a shot. Sure. We mm-hmm. come in here and just naturally bounce. Yeah, all yeah, each other. I noticed that. I noticed no, that. And, yeah. and we we have very few episodes the way it was dull or it wasn't good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You feel mm-hmm. me? So it's just like it's the same thing with acting. And I think too, what helped me is that I had a scene with a good actor. Mm-hmm. And when you have a right, scene right, with a good right. actor, it automatically that makes you better. Is. I was telling Bless, I said, Country Wayne is a better actor when you're on set with him. Mm-hmm. Because y'all feed off of each other better. Yeah. When he's yeah. in scenes with other people, it's like you could tell him act. But when he's in scenes with you, it's different because there's a mm-hmm. level of being comfortable that comes with that. Mm-hmm. So when you learn how to be comfortable in front of, like, comfortable on your own and in front of people watching, you, you good. Mm-hmm. I have no issue with that. So that's why I know, yeah. I, know, I know, like, I could be really fucking good at this if I worked at it. Because mm-hmm. it's just something that comes natural, and I'm grateful for that. Yeah. I believe you, man. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. I think your scene gonna be I'm fine. A, I'm gonna be good. I can't I'm wait. To, yeah, I'm gonna I be just, good. I just got to see this one minute. But I'm I want to see it. I want to see it. I'm gonna, gonna give you a chat. I know people kind of they they start to drift after hour and thirty. So I want to give you the opportunity just to plug, mm-hmm. tell people where to find the movie first of all, okay. and what's next coming from you, and okay. just where to find you at in general. All things that are you. Okay. Um, you can find the movie first of all streaming on Amazon Prime Video, Tubi. And uh, reveal currently right now um, at the time of this this podcast, um, you can take and find me. Of course, I'm on Instagram, Facebook. Um, I got about 13 pages. So right. type in Manager of the Year. You can go to my website www.manageroftheyear.net. Uh, we also have a merch shop with all the sacred gear and things of that nature. Um, man, uh, let me see. I. I Tell us, tell us what you got next, so they can make a news story on your ass. Oh tell man, tell us what's right. gonna is, drop next. So this they can... is this is what my PR person told me to say in all these interviews because she knows I'm doing interviews now. We are hopeful for the future. I like that. Yeah, that what you that what you should have said the first time. I know, right? Yeah, that what you should have said the first time. The yeah. committee gonna show up and shit it all down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You do that you want oh, yeah. to, bro. We are hopeful all, for yeah. the future. All you do when you tell people what you got going on is you let them know where to burn the cross. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's I know where to burn across it. That's it. And I know every single thing I'm doing now for the next couple of weeks interviews is going to be nitpicked, watched, and sent to certain mm-hmm. people. One hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent, bro. Yeah. You're gonna be the, you're gonna be one of the most hated men in Pensacola <laughs> in a minute. Oh yeah. In oh, a minute. Yeah. The more success you get, bro, the harder it's gonna yeah. be to be outside. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, but I'm grateful, man. I'm thankful, man, for you guys once again. This is an amazing podcast. You guys are doing an amazing job. Um, like I said, I've watched the episodes, so I knew what I was getting on. But mm-hmm. man, shout out to both of y'all, man. The language was so good on here tonight. Oh man. yeah, we ain't go I crazy. Say, yeah, I say, yeah, we started. I've seen Listen, some episodes. My, you head, be like, my head was spinning. You opened some doors. I wanted to book. <laughs> Boy, he, he, yeah, he I said you. Yeah. You yeah, and Larry man. Watson are the only people we ever did that for. And yeah, he actually, Larry Watson yeah. was good. Larry Watson he, actually, was good. he actually went, he, he went a little psycho on Larry, too. All I asked but, Larry was, can a preacher get head from his wife? I, I just oh, always wanted to know that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's a reasonable question. You, 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 you did the whole blip. You did, you <laughs> did, you did, <laughs> what is that to clip out? Then you did the, then you hit, you did, you did the Bluetooth story, too. Yeah, but that was my own personal story. He just listened to but it. But he was here. Yeah, he just listened. <laughs> yeah, but you know, people can be like, you can't be in the company of that. Yeah. but company of what? <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. All humans procreate. Is that not a part of religion? I didn't ask him, does he go out and fornicate with random women? I just always wanted to know, can a religious man have a vigorous sex life? I didn't know if it was like a, that's a reasonable thought. Maybe I want to preach, but I ain't think I can. Well, let's say what, man, I really enjoyed the Anxiety Issues podcast. You guys have been amazing. You see where it's going, don't you? Yeah, it's going smart, man. I like you where it's going, though. You PR train. I got you, man. I ain't never made a guest to close it out. He saw this about to turn up, though. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,